Warning. Broken simulation. Broken simulation. With Sam Tripoli. Welcome to Johnny Wooder Presents Broken Simulation, starring Johnny Woodard. And anyways, nobody cares. I care, Sam. Thank you, Johnny. I care. That's Sam Tripoli over there, folks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank one of the you. most Thank respected you. and beloved comedians in L.A. The guy right who now. can sell tens of tens of tickets in anywhere he goes. I just saw I just saw Nate Bergazzi sold out an arena, and I was like, I wanted to write, and I just won my fantasy basketball league. We're both <laughs> doing great. That's not that's fake news but there. Sam Johnny, did not win his don't fantasy even basketball start league. with that. It's not true. Johnny, I mean, was, Johnny it's 100% you can go to the, true. Let's just go to the official uh, Twitter for Punch Okay, Trump. okay. Oh, for the official Punch Trump. You know where I'm going to go, Johnny? I took a picture of it. I'm going to ESPN. And what's yeah. this? Oh, ESPN. ESPN what's doesn't make the rules of our league. Yeah, anyway. Here we go right here. Congrats Anyways. to Sam Tripoli for winning the Punch Drunk Postseason <laughs> Exhibition Tournament. <laughs> And as we you said last week, such a cool well done to Johnny Woodard for his sparkling 17 Johnny, one and one record on the way to Johnny, winning the national Johnny, championship. His Johnny, record Johnny, fourth. Johnny, see you Johnny, next year. And as you Johnny, can see right there, I walk out I won right 17 now. in if a you row. Turn down my mic again. I okay. won 17 in a row. Johnny, let's face it. That, Sam Sam that, Tripoli had six losses. I have one loss, two if you count the postseason exhibition low? tournament. How many did you win in a row? 17 in a row. 17 in a row, 17 in a row no, Johnny. No, no, I'm sorry, 19 in a row. Johnny, if you count how's the, that feel? I didn't count the postseason exhibition tournament because they're not official games, as I said. <laughs> yeah, okay, Johnny. And that's from the Woo, official Punch Drunk Twitter. That, right there. Oh, just think about this. Sam the also said he won last year, which 19, is weird. Because I have the ring nine, for last year's championship. 19 wins, and then you go to the... The championship round. See, Sam, and Sam had lose. the same argument last year. in a row. Year. My God, I've got the hurt. ring for the it thing. It was literally there's like... the ring right there. <laughs> if you look at it, what does it the ring literal. say, guys? I know you guys don't like it us says talking fantasy sports, but basketball. There is nothing crazier champion. than Johnny had. And then if you listen, look right on the bottom, it says Johnny Woodard, Johnny 2020 Woodard. true champion, 2022, <laughs> right? One of the you greatest. See. Johnny had one of the greatest seasons. Ever That's put true. together. Yeah. I had a great team, and you had a mediocre team. And it what, you're, up, what you're witnessing here, folks, if, I have control over the cameras. The ring, He's not on camera. It don't mean a thing. What? Yeah, yeah, Johnny. I got the ring no, right here. Don't, there Johnny. it is. That's last year's I ring. I have another one for this year. No. It's on the way. It's okay. already coming. They sent it to me. <laughs> I am the winner. He's not. It is great. This I, is delusion, Johnny. what you're Johnny, seeing here. Johnny, there's nobody This is what they said Trump did. This is what they accused Trump of, what he's doing right now. No, dude, I have official. Stop the steal. Stop Hashtag stop the steal. <laughs> Johnny, Hashtag stop it's the steal. Okay. Nope. I won. Feels great. Feels great. Feels you good. won the postseason exhibition tournament, the okay. invitation. Well, that's the, right. Uh, uh, otherwise known as the playoffs. So I won. You won. You, yeah, you won the postseason Johnny, exhibition Johnny? playoffs. Yeah, it's not. I mean, he's just lying. He's okay. lying to everybody. Okay, I'm sorry. Johnny. Johnny, You're being okay. lied to by Sam. Anyways, guys, if you want to see me live. Uh, More I fake news on Sam, his Twitter feed here. SamTripoli.com. Uh, just go to SamTripoli.com. All my dates are there. We got a giant. Uh, I got to put together a fucking comedy chaos. Comedy chaos. Uh, 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 well, what's, what's happening to you right now? Comedy chaos. Uh, it's <laughs> April 11th. And then I'm in, a, I'm in Toronto the 13th, 14th, and 15th. And then I'm also in San Diego in the first week of Mo yeah, oh, June. Damn, it's June. I didn't even know that. Yeah, so I've got a lot of dates going on right now because I've been focusing on working. So yeah, that's it. A family to take care of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, today it was great. Got the new place. I moved, Johnny. You know what I've learned about moving? Oh, the worst. You know what I've learned? I'm a hoarder. That's what I've learned. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that last week that you uh, you have inherited hoarding. Yeah, uh, I, I, am, I come from a long line of hoarders, and Dana's hoarded. Dana's been hoard Dana's finding clothes she had 27 years ago. 27 years ago? D dude, let me tell you something. Hmm. I have a two-car garage that has no room for cars because there's so many bags of clothes that I have to go through and decide what to keep and what to throw out. I have a 26-year-old shirt in my closet, Aerosmith shirt for my first concert. That was your first concert? Yeah, Aerosmith, 97, nine lives tour. I think mine was concert. Cinderella and White Lion. It's not, I, Cinderella was okay. Yeah, Cinderella, they did those hair bands are great. Yeah, dude, they, they did their thing, man, for sure. I mean, it's a shame, kind of, that Nirvana came along, and just kind of wiped them. I mean, just wiped them off the board. Well, you know, all was, at once. Yeah, it's the same thing that happened to like early rap, and then like you know, 
gangster rap came through, crime rhyme stuff, and they couldn't get anything going anymore. All that positive music, gone. Now it was replaced by crime rhymes and, you know, heavy metal was replaced by all this depressed, like, heroin music that, yeah. you know, and, and dude, it's so funny. You when think you there's know. an agenda there? What? Of course, dude. Interesting. Is it? You don't, you don't believe that? So anyways. No, 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 I do. I do. I do. I, I think I think for sure that's, uh, if you look at the trends of things, I mean, they kind of track with the times, but I do believe there's a hand on the, on the, on 100%, the, the, the bro. lever. So, I mean, like, dude, I'm emotionally attached to anything. Like, I have what all these... What do you these... mean by just any... Yeah, me too. I'm the exact I mean, like, like, I can find a, a, a baby sock. Be like, oh, my God, it's the baby socks. <laughs> yeah. I can't throw this away. No, I, dude, I'm the it's same It's the way. baby sock. And my mom's the exact opposite. So I'll come home sometimes and just find that she's just committed a genocide of my property and uh, thrown a bunch of shit out. Oh, and it drives me crazy. Oh, that's the worst, bro. No, it drives me nuts. Dude, so one time, I had a... Okay, so I was working in South Carolina... And was kind of in the process of moving my shit down there. I just taking a job, and I came back one day and was like, uh, "Hey, did you see that laptop that was under my desk that had my entire life's work on it? Every story I'd ever written saved on the hard drive." And my mom was like, "Oh no, it looked like it was broken, so I threw it away." <laughs> a laptop, a Mac, a Mac laptop. Oh my god! Just chucked it out. Dude, she, if anything, like you sit a drink down. It's unattended. It's getting poured out and then put away. I, I, she's taking my food and throwing it away a million times. So when I used to live uh, back at, at, in the house with the kids, when they were with the mom, we were all together. Uh -huh. uh, you know, it would it would get so chaotic there. I would get a, a housekeeper to come and clean, right? Mm -hmm. And so we got this one girl, woman, and she was a great cleaner. And but she would just break shit as she went along. <laughs> Yeah, I can relate. She yeah. would just break shit. And like and of course, me, when you're a misfit toy, I want to help you more. So like I, I would hire her more and more because oh, I felt no. bad for her. Oh, right? No. That's so like if you F up, I'm like, oh <laughs> dude, let me help you. That's hilarious. Right, let me help you. <laughs> so so uh, so one day, you know, and if there's any women who listen to the show, we know we got a couple of hot janitors and uh uh shout out. Shout out to the hot janitors. Shout By the way, janitors. my mother will be like, um, my, did I tell you this all the time? My mom will be like, oh my God, Mrs. Johnson just passed away. Can you give her, can you give her son a shout out? I was like, and to all you deep lovers out there, this goes out to the children of Mrs. Johnson who just <laughs> passed away. Shout out to everybody who loved Mrs. Johnson. Tough shout day for out. you folks out there. She's <laughs> gone, baby. Going, going, gone. Miss <laughs> Johnson, uh, see you in heaven, baby. <laughs> this one's for you. Smoke so, gets in your eyes by the platters coming up. <laughs> they asked me how I knew. So, so, uh, so one day she's cleaning the house, man. And like this goes out to all the moms out there. You know how hard it is to create milk for breastfeeding? Shout out, mommies. Shout out to the moms. They put this machine on you and it just chugs. That's what it does. <laughs> you know what that makes me think of. Have you seen that guy that puts those like cups on his boobs? Yeah. You know what I'm talking Oh, it's so gross. The old guy? Yeah, the old guy. Yeah, oh, is he's he so still alive or I don't know. Like I just saw him on Twitter the other day and I'm like, oh, this guy's so gross. <laughs> it's some guy who like puts like if, if you're yeah. listening, homie, he it's the equivalent of the penis pump, you know? Yeah. But for your breasts, I think. Like, dude, when you're an old weirdo, bro, and, you just, oh, it's got, it's, and you just kick the can the so far down the road, well, not to say you're just into the weirdest shit. Not to say weirdo, but that's what happens with a lot of these male to female trans people, is that they don't age like women, so they start to get like male pattern baldness. Oh yeah, for sure. And the lines of a man's yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, just it's a hard yeah. way to age, dude. Well, like, Johnny, I was saying woman. this. Is there any bigger like, listen, we could sit there and be like, do you think there's some attractive trans out there that look like like a Blair White, right? Doesn't that look like a hot chick? There are plenty of male to female trans that are close representation of, of an attractive, attractive women. Woman. So let's, is there any, is there any big, bigger disparity between Tra uh, like attracting this than the ones between actual trans and trans activists. Like, 
<laughs> not a good. Now, if you did, who was the most unattractive? I had to take it down, but it was like between like pro choice, trans activists, or people who still wear masks. Power rank that as the most unattractive. Pro choice. Pro choice. I think they're last because there's a lot of smoking hot chicks. In yeah, but choice. like there are some hot go- like the ones who yell "my body, my choice." Yeah, and even the ones that are like they're young and hot. Okay, that's fine. But then when they start to age and they're so crazy, they start they 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 speed up the aging process. Yeah, and then two is oh, what were the other two again? Masks. The, People wear masks. The masks. Yeah. Don't know. Can't see their face. So not sure. Yeah, but you can get overall vibe. No, it's the mask. Have you ever seen like? Dude, a- people are starting to wear a mask again in L.A. I'm seeing them around a grocery store a lot and stuff. Yeah, but I don't like, think they ever. Dude, there's people. It didn't stop. The weirdest ones is when you put one on your kid. I like. What? Where do you live? Anyways, I know, I know. move right along. I think it goes. I think it goes like this, Johnny. It goes. It goes most ugly to uh, uh, best looking. Right. It goes. It goes. Um, trans activist, mass, and then. Pro choice because you are right. There so are exactly what I said. Yeah, I agree. You didn't say mask. I said yeah. You said mask in the middle. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. I think so. I was too busy calculating my poll and coming up with the results. I agree so. with yours though. Even if that's not what I said, you're right. You're right. Right. That's yeah. where it goes. That's where it goes. So uh, I love ranking people based on how ugly they are. That's one of my well, favorite. Well, you know, activities. as a guy who's a hard five, I accept it. Okay. <laughs> I'm allowed. You're to hard on yourself. No, I've been gaining a lot of weight, Johnny. Really? Yeah. I hadn't noticed that. To the point I think I'm going to do some testosterone replacement. Nothing wrong with that, I don't think. Is there? I don't know. I don't think so. No, I think that's fine. I just, I'm always tired. And like at my age, if I don't work out for like, it takes you're a always, week. You say you're always tired, but you do more shit than anybody yeah, I know, man. I know. You're I know, always but that's going. I'm, I'm tired. You go to cry. I know, but you're supposed to be tired after doing a lot of stuff. I know, but I, I, to, you know, testosterone is not going to be some magic thing that makes you like have unlimited energy like a child. I don't know, but I'm just going to take that, it. That's called speed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I already tried that. It yeah. didn't work out. <laughs> it didn't work out. So, uh, I don't even know what I was talking about. What am I talking about? The, the, you were moving uh, the other day, and Dana had a bunch of old shirts from the. Well, yeah. So we're hoarding. Ago. It takes forever. And they've already chipped up the house. So I'm about to deal with that. What does that mean, chipped up? Damaged the house? Yeah. Oh. Little chips here and there. The movie? We've been there a week. Dana's already bitching. <laughs> I'm like, you picked the house. <laughs> you picked the house. That's funny. I had another house, but you picked the house. Come on, Dana. It's a lot of house. It's a lot of house. Too much house? No. It's but it's great. It's expensive though. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just like I got daddy's gotta keep working. <laughs> if you moved out of LA, uh you would be in not LA, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so we had uh, <laughs> there's my segue. There you go. <laughs> well well played, John. So if you remember a couple of months ago, we we should probably Johnny, just show. how much did you enjoy the way he l- made you look right there? <laughs> it, is, it is not bad, is it? He uh, really nailed you. Are you upset that the red, red square right there is? So if you remember a couple of months ago, there was this woman. Oh, not Atlanta, sorry. Uh, who, this white woman who ripped off this song called Not Atlanta. Now, was, he meant, was it meant to be real? Or was someone said she was a comic? I, yeah, I heard that too. What is the deal with
not Atlanta. Yeah, by the way, there is enough controversy that this video needed to be made. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's oh, yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of arguing yeah, about yeah, yeah. what's Atlanta. Yeah. People are in Noonan being like, I, I live in Atlanta. I did to set the record oh. straight. Yeah, that's funny. All we right, so it. we so made he, fun of uh, the white version of yeah, that song. Yeah, And then my swag. a tremendous listener called uh, Hi-Fi, H-I-P-H-I. Guys, give them... Uh, give him Check him, him out on YouTube. A, a subscription. H I P H I on YouTube. H I P H I. Hi five. One word. He's probably in Philly. And, and he's he got a little black face guy down there. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know all the slang, baby, 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 baby. yeah. I have no memory of saying baby like that. Baby, like. baby, 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 baby. Westlake Village is not LA. Westlake Village, not LA. More Park, More is not, Park LA. not LA. Camarillo, not LA. Covina, not, not LA. LA. San Fernando, not, not LA. LA. Woodland Hills, not, not LA. LA. Rose, 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 me, not, not LA. LA. Not LA, 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 not LA,
this. Yeah, you did. You did. So anyways, and that's another thing. It's like all my friends are older and moved away. So it's like, who am I going to call to yeah. ask? Yeah. Me and XG, at, can you imagine? Yeah, XG came. Oh, well, why didn't you? I would have come. I told you I would come. I, I, you know what? I yelled that you didn't come, but then I also remember I didn't ask you. Yeah, so I, I told just, you several times. And I then know. I told Dana even. I said, "Hey, just let me know. I got my I car." Just, I just feel bad making people move, and the fact that uh, you know, just not XG. Well, XG's <laughs> Mexican, so I feel like it's in his bones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, XG basically got in tinfoil hat. And I saw him at Home Depot, and I just threw him in on the <laughs> shelf. <laughs> That's about it. So funny. So, so they bring everything over, and it was the first night. And it's like crazy to sleep in. I love it. I love where I live. I love it. My next, I have two neighbors that live next door, both hot chicks. How far is it from where you, the place you had before that you said had the shitty landlord last week? Uh, I would say it's 10, 10 miles. Oh, it's far. Okay. Uh, my new house has a bidet in it. Dude, I saw your Instagram post and it was, it made me uncomfortable, I have to say. Cause you just, it was Sam posted on Instagram his first time using a bidet and it's just pure eye contact. He's just with the camera like this going like, and it made me very uncomfortable because I, I uh, should I should I delete it? it? It was what made me uncomfortable was you knowing what was happening to your butthole while you were looking at me in the eyes. That was what. That's called me. being a man. Getting your but butthole bidet. Yeah, that's Johnny, being a man. You want to see that's my being a French man? Is what me being uh, uh, be, me being on bidet uh, bidet. It, it's basically that picture of you going like like yeah. that. That's what it looked like. Here's my impression. Ready? Here it is. Sam Tripoli. Doing a bidet, using a bidet for the first time. Oh, no, he, no, he likes it. I'm gay. Did you see that South Park episode about bidets, like fancy no. toilets? Two weeks, like, no. like two weeks ago, they just had one. It was great. Really? Yeah, dude. It's about fancy Japanese toilets and how they just like ruin your life. Randy gets one, and, and it's hilarious. Yeah, it's great. I won't use the other bathroom. I will always get hose down my peel. It like bro. the t- toilet, and it's a real toilet. This Japanese toilet like plays music while you're taking <laughs> the shit and stuff. You come in, really? and it's like, oh. Is it like the chat GPT of toilets? <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. It, like when you walk up to it, the toilet bowl lifts. Like, oh, yeah, like this is a real toilet itself? too. Yeah, these fancy Japanese toilets are real. And they have bidets built in and different kind of wash, like warm water, heated does toilet it, seats. Does it massage your nuts? No, it doesn't massage your nuts. No, that's the one. So thing. it's not, not yet, perfect. Any, not yet. Okay, so they got it. Someday. <laughs> yeah, someday. There's some. They have goals still, you know, to strive for. At someday there'll be something where, like, there'll just be this machine comes up and it just sucks in your Ugh. your package and just just. I just, think that's what the astronauts have. It's like some kind of suction. Like I have to have to make a seal when they go to the bathroom. <laughs> I really think that. How about that thing ruins them for their wife? Yeah, for the just gives them all life? hemorrhoids and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh no. no! From the other end, I yeah. got you. Yeah. It just sucks off so good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now we know where they masturbate in now, space. Yeah. Now all they do is want to go to space uh, all the that's time. Funny. That's funny. Yeah, it was it was great, dude. I'm so happy to be in my new place. My kids run around. My kids love basketball, which I'm so excited about. Dude. Really? Oh yeah, they love it, dude. I got them a little basketball hoop and. The, both of them are dunking it, and I'm just yelling, "Boom, shaka laka, boom!" Do they like, dunk on each other? Yeah, yeah. I want to. Sh- I'll show you a video of it sometimes. It's pretty cool, dude. It's great, dude. It's great. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. So, uh, do we want to do some calls? Can I ask something? you a question? Yeah. Can we talk about Mark and wh- how he fucked us this week on Tinfoil Hat? Yeah, Mark listens. Let's talk to him. Yeah, right, so, right now. So, so Mark, our Booker, right? And Mark's an interesting guy. <laughs> That's he, a word for it. Yeah. So sometimes Mark gets very comfortable, right? Well, every like week we, we put people. out this show, and then we get, we when it notes. comes out, Mark gives us his critique of yeah, the show every notes. week. And, we, and he's not afraid to call us retards. It's mostly shit we fucked up, is what he tells us. Yeah. Too. Yeah. It's never like, oh, great show, guys. It was hilarious. I loved especially <laughs> this joke and this joke. No, it's always, you fucked this up. This is wrong. That was 1978, not 1977. <laughs> You don't know what you're talking about, basically, is what he tells us every week. And and uh, we anxiously await those texts uh, after the show every we week. We don't. We don't. We don't. <laughs> so, I mean, like, he literally called me retard the other day. I'm like, I've fired people for less. <laughs> I've fired people 
for less. Like I can, I, we should just pull up his text. What he's, what he, the, like the last one. All right. So this was after our last broken Sam. Sam, Alistair Crowley did not. This is in all caps. Did not invent as above, so below. Come on, man. Don't get it twisted. You're thinking of his quote: "Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law." If a chick had "Do what thou wilt" written on her face, she's asking for trouble. And then here's a text to me. No, they don't have real comedians on Kill Tony, Johnny. It used to be mainly L.A. open mic comics. When they moved to Texas, the show got a lot bigger, so the level of comic that goes to sign up has changed. But it's always random bucket pull, so you could have someone sign signing for their first minute of comedy while 10-year comments are waiting in the same line hoping their name gets pulled. So to answer your question, ultimately, no, Kill Tony hasn't changed the formula. Well, he just said, no, they don't have real yeah. comics on yeah. but now he said they have 10 year comics why do we care where did that come from do we talk about kill tony we talked about kill tony yeah, a couple uh, weeks uh, ago. what we say oh, we were talking about the guy with the who uh, does that oh yeah like yeah, the, yeah. The voice, uh, as the the, the, uh, the, AI, the the uh the mute guy yeah the mute guy yeah and i was saying this guy's uh, this guy's like a pro comedian. What's he do? I thought Kill Tony was mostly open mic. Right? Yeah, which I guess it is supposed to be. Yeah, it is. But that guy's I mean that guy's a real comic. I mean he's I mean he's 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 working his way up. But if you look at his social media, he's got like a real presence on there even before Kill yeah, Tony. Yeah, yeah, he's got a hook. Right, but I just he's not. I thought the whole premise of that show was that it's mostly like American Idol, the early rounds, you know, but yeah, comedy. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Anyway, so. We so Mark booked this guy who directed the Dividers on a yeah. great documentary. I thought it was great. I loved it. Yeah, I really did. I thought it was amazing. I enjoyed it a lot. And Mark does a good job booking the show. But he told us several times during the week. He goes, "Watch this documentary. You got to watch it." Now he tells us to watch and read shit all the time. All the time. Most and guess the, what? We don't read any of it. No, we don't. We don't Ma read anything. We don't have that kind of time. We're busy. Yeah. We're busy people. I don't have time. Which part of what Mark does is to give us a background of what the guest wants to talk about every episode in the bullet point form. Yes. So we're informed. Yes. Not so we don't have to read a fucking book or yeah, whatever. Exactly. You know, homework in the week before. And, and, and so the whole movie is basically talking about how these trolls mess with Shia LaBeouf. And it was yeah. like, and it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Really well done. It's well done. It, it's the first time you're like, okay, trolls aren't that bad. You know, yeah, trolls yeah. aren't that bad as long as they're not fucking with you, right? That's that's, right. that's yeah. pretty much it. So it's a great movie. I wasn't able to get to the end. Yeah. So then I, I'm going based off of what I watched. And then Mark sends us one. Well, let, you, let me, you want me to read the text then? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then we get a text from Mark after the show. Just listen to the latest tinfoil hat. I'm glad to know how valued my recommendations are. Great show. <laughs> That's passive aggressive. Yeah, and then he follows up after you laugh. He goes, you guys didn't watch the whole movie. And Sam goes, I did. And he goes, I can tell because Sam Hyde, tro Sam Hyde trolled you. Yeah. Trolled okay. you, Sam. Okay, yeah. Okay. And Sam goes, what? He goes, at the very end, Sam Hyde says he made the story up. So he never met Luke Turner and never went to the Venice Art Festival. <laughs> Sam goes, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> now I sound retarded. Uh, and Mark goes, yeah, I was like, what the fuck? Because the doc makes Luke Turner look like he set Sam Hyde and Shia LaBeouf up to face off. And he and Sam goes, don't worry, uh, Sam. You you sounding retarded is part of what makes Tim Foyle ha hilarious. But by the way, who talks their boss like that? Nobody who wants to keep their job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then Sam goes, fuck you for not telling us. <laughs> yeah. And Mark goes, I told you to watch the film. You want me to spoil it for you, too? Yes, That's I your job. That's exactly. <laughs> hey, man, you might want to know that at the end there is a reveal. That's literally your that, job. That changes the movie. Yeah. Yeah, and the guy who wore the Game Boy around his neck, this is him correcting us, uh, who ran for mayor made the whole milk uh, is racist thing up. Well, it wasn't really a twist as much as Sam Hyde being Sam Hyde. If anything makes... Well, anyway, I'm not going to say that. Uh, yeah, he thought it made the director look retarded. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, what Ryder Lee was saying about MK Ultra and UFO abductees is fascinating. It's also the plot of X-Files comic book series. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Sam. Thanks, thanks, Mark. We really need to know that. <laughs> it's just like, who talks to their boss like that? Yeah. So 
The uh, Mark essentially sabotaged. Tempo Mark, great this job week. sabotaging the show. Great job. It's almost like, and, and he he told he's like, I told you to watch the last forty five minutes, especially. He did say that. But, but you, you got to tell us why. Why, why? exactly? Hey dude, you want to watch the end because there's a plot twist at the end that you might need to know about. Mark the Booker. Uh, Mark the Booker fucked us this week. Huh? Mark the Booker. He does a great job. That's mm-hmm. why I put up with it. But mm-hmm. he thinks I, I won't fuck around. Well, you know, you're surrounded by people that you put up with shit, including me, uh, because they do other things well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyways... Yeah, so, I mean, uh, Mark's going to hear this. Uh, no, of course he is. And we that's why we're saying nice <laughs> things here at the end. Because <laughs> he's going to um, hear it. Um, if he wasn't going to hear it, believe me, this would be just a skull dragging. But, Mark, since you're going to hear this, uh, you're a great man. Uh, we enjoy talking I'm, to you. You're not a great man. You're a good guy, but you're a retard. <laughs> you really are. I mean, like, who talks to their boss like that? I go, dude, who, did he just call me a retard? Can you, can you imagine... Just uh, working in another place, and then at the, end, at the end of the week, just sending your boss an email of all the shit he fucked up. That yeah. week, you know? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Being like like the intern for a senator or something, and be like, listen, senator, you said a lot Mark of things wrong in here. He's week. like, I like the interview. I would ask some other questions. Well, then you ask those questions on your podcast. Yeah. I'm actually known as a decent well, interviewer. You shouldn't say that because he might actually do that. Well, he's known. Yeah. He's been known to compete. Remember our rule where you're not allowed again. to have the guests on your show first? You don't think I know? <laughs> Dumbass. Dumbass. <laughs> hey, everybody. Sam has his daughters to think of. And if you have a family, you know how much your loved ones depend on you. In a worst case scenario, you would not want them to have to worry about money. A good life insurance plan can give you peace of mind that if something happens to you, your family would have a safety net to cover mortgage payments, college costs, and other expenses so they can get back on their feet and focus on what's most important. Now is a great time to take the lead to future-proof your family's finances by getting life insurance, and Policy Genius gives you a smarter way to find and buy it. I know Sam recently gave himself that peace of mind by buying a life insurance policy and he sleeps much better at night knowing that his daughters would be taken care of in the event something happens to him, God forbid. Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $25 per month for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius has licensed agents who can help in the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. There are no added fees and your personal details are kept private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net you deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description of this episode to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Again, that's policygenius.com. Anyway, so Johnny, I just did a big show in L.A. called Yuckaholics, okay? And it is... And it is a show... For in the, uh, and I think I've talked about this in the past on the show, but the, it's the, it's a sobriety show, and it's done in these school theaters, and these school theaters, Johnny, are huge. High schools? Oh yeah, Johnny. These high schools that these kids go to in L.A. look like like a decent sized city hall. And what is raising money for the program or something? What it does is it raise money for like well what it, well what it used to do was raise money for treatment centers, but now there's so much money in treatment oh, yeah. that they don't even need it. That's now, Johnny, funny. do you know the well how they used to make tons of money was drug testing. How's that? What do you mean? That these treatment centers were getting paid per drug test because the 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 owners of the treatment center, they were, um, so how'd it go? Well, they were invested in the labs? 
The lab place? Yeah, like lab the, lab, or the labs paid them X number Got of dollars it. because they charged the insurance. So they were walking up with duffel bags of cash. That's that, that's typical. Any any dude, anything that even touches healthcare and pharmaceuticals it's is all corrupt. It's bloated yeah. and corrupt and everyone's cash and checked. And I don't understand how the insurance companies put up with it. Dude. Nobody has more cash reserves than the insurance companies. They're sitting on billions of dollars. They're they they're fine. Yeah, I get it, but they're still getting fleeced. And I'm not sitting there telling you insurance companies need our pity, but I'm saying that it's just so weird that like they are getting lit up for cash. Yeah. Well, the taxpayers are paying. So that. so it's this thing, and it's pretty cool. So I'm sitting there, and on this show is some very fucking funny people dustin yarbrough who is a great comic actor he's sober he crushes it jay moore is on the show can i ask you really quickly how does this brush up a show like this against because you know there's there's a saying in a right that the anonymous part is almost as important really is there some kind of like that as the alcoholic part well, well, I, how does this I don't kinda... think any. I, I mean, I'm not giving away anybody's secrets. But I mean, even calling openly... it yuckaholic, so I'm talking about the show, not you talking about it. Like, I'm saying there's the a show. Bu- I think everybody who's on the show talks about being sober all the time. No, no, but I, I, I'm not talking about the t- you talking. I'm saying the show itself, like a show, yeah, like yuck-aholic. a public thing yeah. where everybody's like coming into a big space and everything. Yeah, like is everybody there in the in AA? Most or? of them are in, but AA. not everybody. They're yeah. either in AA. Or they're the they like the significant though, right? others, yeah. Okay, I just I, that always confused me a little bit because I thought it was meant to be kind of like a so so shadowy kind of thing. So uh, we do the show, and I have high, high anxiety. I have a high anxiety show, like Mel Brooks. Yeah, I get very high anxiety. I get like very. I start freaking out because really, yeah, like I'm gonna be too edgy for the show. But then I realize I'm at a sober show. How often do you get anxiety like that before doing stand up? Not often, right? No, on the road, never. In L.A., occasionally, because they're so woke out here, you just don't know. And like I'm so used to being just teeing off uh, with my crowds. Is it more you don't want to do bad? In front of the crowd, or you don't want to do bad because in LA there are people that you respect watching. No, probably. I don't want to ruin people's shows. Okay, you don't care I'm, about industry being in there. No, I don't get. I don't. I don't want to be in television. Anything. Okay. I like podcasting. I want to work on trying to create better content. That's it, and which I'm trying to figure out in my house where I could do all this stuff. That's like what I really. Don't want. you have a big garage doing there? Yeah, but it's full. Did you not hear what I said? Yeah, yeah, it's I got said. a yard sale, and I'm probably going to do a garage sale, which is basically can I make money before I throw the shit out? Right. Probably. Everything's for a dollar. I'm just going to sell for. Are you a getting do- rid of all those T-shirts you had in your closet? That's the question. What do I do with like naughty show T-shirts? Let's and stuff? Cre- dude. We'll create a website. Put them up. Put them all up. Yeah. I'll do it for you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 So so we're all I'll there. It, it walks Jay Moore. He's a great guy. He's doing great. He looks great. He brings his fiance. Guess who his fiance is? Who's I, I feel like I know this, but Jeannie Bus. Yeah. Yeah. Of the Lakers. That, yeah. Look how close I was to power. <laughs> I wonder how they met. That's a weird pair. It is weird, but that's that's Jay Moore. He's a he's a go getter. <laughs> A go getter that he's a, he's what stri- social striving there you think no like, I mean like he like sets his sights high good for him I say why not no I, why not exactly but that's I think that's the close I've ever been. no the only time I've ever been close the close I've ever been to a billionaire was when Joe Rogan took me to eat with the owners of the UFC and I sat right next to them which they're about to be even richer now I mean did you see the day that they're no but I think they sold a big part of it oh, and then this is already um uh they're the, getting merged or like the guy getting who brought on an umbrella with WWE WWE which is, which is insanity right yeah. which is insanity it's wild so uh, I don't even know what so to, I who knows what's gonna happen with Dana White who's gonna run it? I mean it's and you know it's called TKO Oh, is that what they're calling it? The That's what thing? they're calling it. I wonder what the Dana White too, especially with the recent slapping incident. I wonder if he's uh, he might be on the way out because you know when you get a big company like that, they kind of get conscious about their image. You know, yeah, I, about well, stuff. it's a it's a what it's a twenty four billion dollar industry it's now. Crazy. 
It's a $24 billion company. I don't care how big Dana White is. They don't care. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah. And he did, I mean, he did a great job, uh, you know, shepherding UFC through the dark years and everything and bringing it into the light. But he could be on his yeah, way out. So I'm afraid. Was, I was like, you know, should I, should I, uh, should I defend Ari right now? And try to oh, <laughs> didn't even think about that. Uh, Ari, uh, if you don't know, uh, if you lived under a rock during Kobe Bryant's death, uh, was nearly uh, was what they had a what would you say? What do they call it when the uh, Muslims like they put out a a, a hit on you? What is a, it called? A, 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 a fatwa, yeah. A fatwa. That, yeah, the, the Lakers fan base put a fatwa on uh, Ari after he a made fun of. Fatwa sounds like a per- pussy fart, doesn't it? Uh, they what? Put, <laughs> that's just gross. Uh, uh, yeah, they put a fatwa on uh, Ari fatwa? after uh, fog like Leghorn, or <laughs> <laughs> because he made fun of uh, you know he did his normal thing where he shits on somebody after they die, and uh, I, I you know he wasn't really wasn't safe in L.A. for a while. Legitimately wasn't safe walking the streets of L.A. for a while. I would say. Wouldn't you say he was seriously? Yeah, not that's safe? crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but if you talk to Ari, he totally has a different version of it where, like, he dominated everybody. And I'm like, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I remember when I said you were hiding somewhere and you jumped off of a podcast. <laughs> but he's bounced back, huh? I mean, they were, they found his parents' address and were, like, terrorizing his parents. That's how bad it got for that thing. Poor family. Crazy. Yeah, like yeah. we just want to love the Lord. It's like we're, being Tom Green. We're Green's Jews. Yeah. We're just trying to be Jews, hanging out with our curler curlers on the side, <laughs> our Shirley Temple curls on the side. We remember, remember originally, he did he do the taping the first time or did he stop right no, before they he was were about, about to? And then they were like, because he had grown out those curls, on, we and, he, and in about, that version, he was going to have them. I love that he was getting into his Larry the Cable Guy of Jews. Look, going yeah. where he's put on a costume, but how much? How many views does that thing have now? Oh, it's way, it's way up there, it's six, seven, something like that. I don't know. Uh, let's see. So what? You, you were gonna st- defend Ari in front of Genie Bus? No, I was gonna make a joke about it. I was just joking. I did you? Did you put, come back from that, or did you? Uh, uh, Five point seven million. Wow, that's views. great, dude. Yeah. That's almost a view for every person lost. <laughs> Jeez. Well, that's what he was trying to do, you know. He, he was joking about that. He was trying to uh he was trying to get to that number. Um, He's so close. Everybody go watch it again. Get the <laughs> get the six mil. Hold on. So come on, what happened to the show? So, so every, here's what I've learned about everybody. And I'm not going to say, not even just in this show. I don't care how big you get, you get anxiety before you go up. And then afterwards, you hope you did well. Yeah, who doesn't hope they did well? Yeah, but it's like really weird. Like, I'm not going to say the name of the comedian, but there was a guy who's like the biggest comic in the world. He had to follow this other big comic. And he was like, why do I have to follow him? And I go, because you're the heavyweight champ. I go, why? And then he got off stage. He was like, was that, was that okay? That's funny. And, like, and I'm like, oh, it never ends. No matter how big you get, it never ends that you're always freaking out about how good you are. And it, did I do well? So and, it makes you good to begin with, though, right? Is well, that- it's like, so like I shared this anxiety. I shared like before the... Before the, the, the show, we did a, a meeting, a, a recovery meeting. Okay. We all sat there. We all kind of talked about how things... In that were. auditorium? No. Um, backstage, all the comics. Oh, the comics. Gotcha, gotcha. And so I shared that I don't like going up in L.A. because the crowds are so woke. But in reality, it's because I don't want to ruin people's shows. That's a kind of a nice place it's coming from, Right. Right. Did you say that part? Or yeah, you just, I said um, it. I don't want to go up there because what I can do in front of my crowd versus what L.A. woke crowds will let me do couldn't be more 180. Yeah, 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 Could for be sure. more 180. You from, could not, from the subject matter to the way you deliver it, yeah. Yeah, be yeah, yeah. Like, I don't believe... I, here are my rules in comedy. It's like, you can say whatever you want, There's, and some people get really pissed at it, and you got to deal with the consequences of that. Mm. But there are certain words that you say 
that I'm told I can't say, if I'm called those words, I will talk about it, and I will say those words. It's the N-word. That's what he's talking about. No, the N-word, the F-word, you name it. Whatever it is I'm told I can't talk about, I'm going to talk about if it happens to me. That's my rule. And some Even if it's not funny? Well, you got to go up to find out if it's funny. I, I just, I'm surprised this happens to you. You, you. you say it like it happens to you a lot. All the time. All yeah. the time. That's what that's at the disconnect for me because I don't think anybody's ever called me the N word. Ever. ever? Ever. Never no. once. Maybe in like high school if I got in like fights, you know, with somebody who was black and they maybe a couple times, but Yeah, I got I got called I get called it all the time. Sometimes What? I, what when's the last why? What? Well some usually it's during sex so when I ask them to call it. But yeah. there are times I set you like up the for that. Paul Mooney one. Yeah, but that's that was twenty years ago. Yeah, but that's not the last time. And then you said all the time black people People say to me in a loving way, and I love it. Okay, this seems like something that doesn't happen that Johnny, much. Johnny, I like being called your, the M word. That in your head, why it is this an issue? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, I may or may not pay a lot of money for phone sex. To have women call me? May or may not. That's okay. Don't worry about it. It's none of your business. Okay. <laughs> Hard R, give it to me. Okay. Oh, I would love to be a fly on the wall for this. No, you wouldn't. It's disgusting. Maybe just have an ear in the room. It's, it's, <laughs> I'll just... call you, Johnny. I'll pay you two dollars a minute. <laughs> Bye, you, Chad. Just do it in call... chat. Yeah. yeah, we should do another uh... chat. Um so I go, uh, I got to watch all these guys super crush, and it was a lot of fun. So I was talking about how like I don't like the room people show, and then everyone in the show was like, just go up there and say the worst thing you can. Say whatever you want. You can do it. And I go, No. It, Sounds like they're yeah. My, my whole bit about how everyone's retarded is like, <laughs> this, as soon as I say Jews do retard shit, I'll lose the entire room. <laughs> Even an AA room, you think? Well, I well, you know, I mean, no, nah, I mean, not so much. I mean, like they're real. I mean, like the I, I I talked about how like how like the best part about doing recovery meetings is like they're all pretty open minded because they hit so low. Like, there's guys out there who shoot heroin in their dick, okay? It's like, they're not going to get offended by words. They're just going to have a good time with it, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it was fun, dude. It was a, it was a fun show. It was great. Everybody killed. And that's it. Right that's on. it. That's it. Any any uh, calls? No, we did calls last week. I mean, we can we can pull some if you want. Or, uh, or, or do we have... Do you have something about sluts, apparently, uh, I'm told? Yes! So, go to Instagram, Johnny. Good part. We've got to talk about this with women bragging about their body count. But this stuff... Oh, can you go Can you go uh, Instagram, look up search, and then just do man on the street stuff? Man on the street. Yeah, so. I mean, my algorithm is jacked. I'm starting to learn jack. Just nothing but it's nothing but hot chicks fighting little hot chicks like little midgets. You want me to type in man on the street into Instagram and search street interviews or something like that? I don't. Because, I, I can't search Instagram. Like it's just it's just giving me like people. Okay. All right. I, I thought hold, you hold on. Just like yeah, it, it will just it brought so, up a profile for a guy called Man on the Street. All these videos, dude. All these videos are just young guys interviewing chicks and ask them what's the freakiest shit you've ever done. And, dude, the things chicks say, it's insanity. And it's like, stop snitching on your snatch, man. These are snatch snitchers. You're snitching on your snatch. I know what you're talking about. It's this genre. Uh, it's like these kind of young, annoying guys that are like slicked hair and they look really put They're together. all good looking guys. Kind of like frat and, boy types. And stuff. they're just somewhere in a college where there's a college. And chicks just tell everything. Yeah. It's, you know it's usually on like a hot, like a, like a St. Patrick's Day yeah. or something. It's like, don't give out your secrets, man. You don't got to give out your secrets. I never, nobody wants to hear it. Okay, so it's always good-looking black guys. Oh, these dude, these good-looking black guys can get away with murder. Asking white asking chick women shit, stuff. and they just have to answer it because if they don't, they're racist. Exactly, yeah. All right, this guy right here, dude. Hey, guys, your boy, the TV guy. We'll be back here. There's Tucson. one guy on here. I wish I could find him that, like, tries to make out with the chicks while he's interviewing them and Arizona stuff. Arizona for you already know, dead day, the biggest party time of the year, as you can see behind me. But Has he got a lisp? Yeah, a little bit. Hey, man, I love it. Good. The guy can't even speak, right? On the dick size and the dick shape. 
stuff. It depends. On dogs. Like sometimes, like riding's the best, but like sometimes doggy, it fucking depends. Just asking random okay, chicks on the street, yeah. their yeah. favorite the sex the the Tell shape. everything. The guys like, you mess with. 20 years ago, these chicks would run in fear. Yeah, can you imagine like going out, waiting outside of like a Beatles concert or something in the 60s and be like, oh uh, yeah, hi ma'am, uh, how do you feel about having your clit licked? Yeah, right, and then people were like, yeah, then they just You'd be told, arrested, you would be nothing, arrested. They, they, there's just not, see, this is my theory about outlaws again. I talk about it all the time, I hate your bingo card. There's nothing outlaw anymore. Yeah. And it's like back in the day when I was growing up, there was like a slut in your your school. She she was a slut, and she got all the perks and all the negatives. The guys loved her, the <laughs> yeah. girls hated her, yeah. and whoever got her pregnant was stuck with her. That's how it went. It was hot potato. You just pass it around, and whoever got it pregnant got her pregnant. Bam! Got it pregnant. <laughs> yeah, your your own child support for the rest of your life. Uh. That's just how it goes. Or you could use a condom. Who knows? I mean, okay, Johnny, this is upstate New York. Let's stop. <laughs> now, now, Johnny, everybody's a slut. It means it's not special, right, Johnny? So it's like, hey, man, back in the day, sluts were like unicorns, okay? Hey, yeah. you're a unicorn. You're mystic. You're, ma ma you're magical. Now they're all fucking sluts. Guess what? You don't have a th now. There's a thousand sluts, which means you don't have a thousand unicorns. You just have a herd of weird-looking horses. That's all you have now. It's not the same thing. They're not magical. It's not magical if everybody's doing it. Don't you think this too adds to? And you're totally right. But don't you think that idea adds to the frustration of the guys that aren't getting laid at all? Because all they see is like. Dude, these chicks are fucking everybody. Why well, am I well, not getting laid? Well, the truth is, is that a hundred percent of women think eighty percent of men are ugly. Yeah, that's exactly what the point I was about to bring up. I, this guy that was on Mar last week was talking about like Tinder. That it's something like, well, he said first of all, women date their attractive and financial level and up, and men date their attractive and financial level and down, only. So if you're a guy who's not very attractive and doesn't make a lot of money. You're fucked. I mean, you have way, no chance. This is how terrorism begins, by the way. <laughs> when you're out of options, you're like, know. yeah, I'll just blow myself up. <laughs> and so on Tinder, you have, and he, I can't remember the stats, but it's some crazy number of like women are all competing, or not, men are all competing. No, no, what is it? Women are are choosing only like the top 3% of guys or something. And then the bottom 97% of guys are are scrounging for like the last 10% of the women. Or I, I mean, it's 100%. just the, the number. Like he said that this is, now I remember this stat really well. The average guy has to swipe 200 times to get a, a, a match. 200 swipe rights to get yeah, one match. Right, right, the right, average, right, the av right, average right, looking guy. Right, right. Which is just, I mean, that's And hopeless. then how many swipes does a, a girl need? One? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just. Until a certain point, and then, then it changes, right? And then it's like it gets really cold quick. So, uh, yeah. you know, unattractive poor guys get no action. Then older women, it slows down. Oh, here's, here's a great stat. You ready? Okay, yeah. this is wonderful. There's a study that's demonstrated that men like 62% of the women on Tinder and women like 4.5% of the men on Tinder. So the percentage of people that you would swipe right on, men are op way open-minded. 62% of the women they swipe right on and women, 4.5% of the guys they swipe right on. So 90, you know, 95.5% of men they are completely ignoring. So it's super interesting That's because crazy. we're getting into a place where they're, they're, they're talking by like 2030, that, or is it 2030 or 2050? I think it's 2030, though, that 50% of the women uh, under like 40 are going to be single and childless. That's crazy. The bottom 80% of men in terms of attractiveness are competing for the bottom 22% of women. So you, even though we have a relatively even numbers of, of it's above. crazy. What do you what do you do though if you're in that bottom barrel? I mean, you just. But does it seem to change as age comes on? Like when you're a young think, chick, but, you are the most powerful force on the planet. You are so powerful. Yeah. By then you got to get settled down though. You know, and most people are settled down. 
Dude, my favorite meme right now. Have you ever seen the meme with all the Asian people trying to fight for the m- microphone? And it says no. wood. You have to look it up. Wood? Wood. W O U L D. And it's like whenever you put it like so so like our favorite uh Twitter account and Instagram is Mug Swatties, right? Mug shoddies. Uh, mug shoddies, okay. I'm glad you remembered mug this time. You usually just say swatties. <laughs> mug swatties. Oh, I got it right here. Okay. <laughs> That's my favorite meme right Hold now. On. Here we go. It's coming up. That's it's this it one right, here. right there. By the way, that's the best picture ever. Like, what is that picture, dude? It's clearly some kind of parliament or like a <laughs> hearing or something. <laughs> I don't know what this meme means. I'm not, what does that mean? Wood. So what happens is like like uh, m- mug swatties, right? Mug shoddies. Shoddies. They would put a picture of a chick, and then everyone would say, "Oh, would, you would, still would hit or not hit?" Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. And that's how hot it is. Even if you commit murder, guys are wondering if they'd still hit it. Well, I mean, you know, you say that, but that think about. I mean, Ted Bundy murderers are just in in. Yeah, people like murderers for some reason. Because women just edgy. Women like men they know can't see other women. That's what they like. That's why they like guys. <laughs> he's literally. In prison. He's, he's literally in jail. Yeah, yeah you know, you know exactly where oh, he is. Funny. Yeah. What? what kind of met guys you be messing with? No a dick size. So like, you know. No, I'm just saying like. Oh, she like black guys. Tell me that. Oh, oh a word. A thing course. I'm just saying like it just. <laughs> It depends. Like some people, I'll fuck up. Like okay, I'd rather use this. Some people, I'll fuck up. Like I'm rather use this. Crazy so, question though. It does, depends. Your, does your dad know you like black eyes? My dad moved to Mexico like ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> and now you know why she's dad. answering this. Because you don't have, have to worry about anyone daddy. answering. Yeah. Oh, I call every no, not everyone, daddy. But if you earn no fucking call you daddy, let's say, fucking hey, go. Stop this. What? Stop this. Look, he's got Westbrook. <laughs> Coming. What? I can't take that now. Oh, the daddy thing. Yeah. Girls call me daddy. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. Shut it down. It always made me kind of weirded out. But. Well, I have kids. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, what are you talking about? Skip around this oh, my God. Children, close your ears. Yeah. Oh. All right, what kind of guys you like? Oh, Accidentally oh, got fingered by him on top of a car. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, oh dude. Oh my These god, children, close anything. your ears. Yeah, but stop. Yeah. All right, what kind of guys you like, Here's though? The thing. Views is this Here's high? the thing. This... This only oh two hundred eighteen thousand views. Here's the thing though, right? It, we should just go get like. But they won't do that with me. Creepy old I'm guy. Creepy yeah. old guy. <laughs> they won't do that with me. We could get XG to do it. Put him out there. Yeah, we could, we and could then just we write for him. Put him a, a mic in his ear. Yeah, we'd write ask him what to say. And then he would be like pronouncing what we said wrong. Hey, so. uh, like, what kind of guys are you into? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so, but it, it's 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 this thing where it's like. They it, it, they act like it's an accomplishment. It's yeah, like, it's some weird like it's like it's like they're bragging, but they're saying shit that should be embarrassing. As well no, as. no, well it, they're bragging like there was some chance of this not happening. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this chick, I mean. go back, could get fingered on a car it's fish every in a barrel, day yeah. of her life. Yeah, it's because shooting. there's a guy that will finger her on a car. And like, Wait, look at this. You, I love this, by the way. It shows you like where people are clicking in the and what people replay in in the in the video. So obviously something really funny happened right here. They have these on Pornhub now too. <laughs> They'll show you like what's the best part. Can I get a kiss, cowgirl? Yeah, this is the guy I'm talking about. Come yeah. in. Look, he just goes out there and tries and to make out. Flashback. It's just so there's no rules anymore. Dude. It's like if the girls gone wild guys were trying to bone the chick. And people will talk about Girls Gone Wild like that was some bygone era that no, we No, that's never... done. My name no, is but, Natalie. But what I'm saying is, this is just as bad as that, talking about this kind What's of shit. What's your favorite position in bed? I show in your was that? Favorite position in bed. Like, how do you like to take fucking dick? Oh. I... So cute ass. Oh, okay. It's time to go. Damn, Man, that's a normal, that's that's a normal a reaction. Normal I'm scared reaction. cutie. I'm just black and big and <laughs> strong and tall. Oh, he brought Damn in race. You What's your favorite position Did in you bed? see that? He brought in the race thing. He's yeah. like, I'm just black and big. Now what are you afraid of me? He's yeah, guilty. Yeah. Listening bands. In bed. Like, how do you like to take dick? Doggy. Oh, how do I like to take dick? Oh. You got her. Well, I don't. <laughs> oh, she's <laughs> lesbian? I do not. 
Get out of here, you little virgin. Go home. You should be partying, you little virgin. Yo, trying to be in an interview. What's good? Yeah, let's yes. be in an interview. So, what's your names? Kennedy. Kennedy. Allie. All right, so, what's your favorite position in bed? By the way, this looks like um, everybody oh in human shit. resources. Probably from the back. Cowgirl. Cowgirl. So, you're a writer. Oh, oh. I changed my answer to what cowgirl. Cowgirl? So, you're a writer too? Uh, yeah, I guess. You have ass. This is indeed I do. Are you mad at them? Mm, look at the three. I can't get mad at them because this is the this is. The I'm mad at somebody. I just don't know who it is. I'm not. Listen, I'm not mad. I love it, but at the same time, it's like it, it's just. I feel like this is our. This is this is one of the precursors to the downfall of society, civilization. Right, to me. Well, listen, like like there was a time where like certain people would bang so many chicks you'd be like oh my god what do you mean like will chamberlain like, like yeah, stories whoever about it was right like like oh my god he betted so many chicks that is so amazing and why is that amazing because you had to convince a woman to let you get inside her right that's like amazing no it's not because they're letting everybody inside them <laughs> they're not they though that what you're saying is not true they're not letting everybody they're they're letting Everybody who's a part of like a few percentages of but those guys everybody are crushing those it. guys are, but most guys are not crushing it. They're not getting anything. I think that I, I and this I, shit is driving them crazy. I can speak as a person who you know at different cold streaks in life has been a member of that group. What was the longest you ever went? Oh, I don't even know. I, I mean, it would be when I moved to LA. I think I went like a year. Oh, it's way long. I mean, it's longer than that for sure. But they're yeah. talking about there's like a percentage of, of the male population has had sex in over a year. Oh, absolutely. And you're yeah. like, dude, there, there's a percentage now of like the 40 year old virgin thing is a percentage of guys now. Like, that's a real thing. That's a, it's that, you know, that used to be so crazy that it was a movie. Like, oh, this guy's a 40 year old virgin. And now that's a real... Now, do you think it has to do with the fact that men are just getting off through pornography now? Part of it, absolutely. And yeah. that they just don't want to put up with the shit? Or do you think it's that... that or, or do you think it's that they just have such low self -esteem? I think white guys have a completely weird view of women. White guys? Yeah. Like, What's they look that? at women through, like... Like a pedestal kind of thing? Yeah, way what? too high. You they, put the pussy on the pedestal. Yeah, that's yeah. what they do. That's what they do. They put it way too high. They've fallen for all of the feminist bullshit, all that talk. They've been convinced that women don't want to be hit on. They've been convinced that women don't want to have sex. they convinced that wanting to have a sex with a woman is degrading. Yeah. That's what they... And it's all... And then they, women want romance and... Uh, well, but it's also not that though, because you hear from women now that guys are like trying to always pull off porno moves in bed and stuff, and they think that m women want that degrading kind of like, you know, BDSM shit in bed, which is not most women. So it's kind of a double edged thing, you know. It's that, and uh, I mean, I hear all the time, you know, from I on guess TV if you're uh, at a certain age and you're you got a woman, and you should just be thankful because it seems like yeah. it seems like the best of times. And the worst of times. It's, yeah, there's no one way. Everything is a mess right now. Yeah, it's crazy, it's a, dude. It's crazy. It's, and this, but with, I'll just give this guy a shout out if you want to see a guy just go around with a camera and use it as an excuse to make out with uh, chicks. It's uh, DB God. So what's crazy about him is that he just jacked Girls Gone Wild. Oh, totally. And this is a whole genre of YouTube video, by the way. He's not the only one doing it. There's a guy that goes around who's got a huge channel. This motherfucker goes around with an iPhone yeah. doing it. Yeah, yeah. And he's huge. I can't remember who it is, but uh, I thought, you know, it used to be the idea was you had to have at least a nice looking camera. That was Girls Gone Wild's thing. They would, in my college, actually, some guys got busted pretending to be Girls Gone Wild. They just rented a camera or something and them. went around and got chicks to show like, Look at that. They got in trouble. Now this is like it's mainstream, part of the yeah. course. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. It's something about it bums me out, but I can't put my finger on quite why. I just, I just, listen, I think everyone loves chicks that fool around, but the, the, there's, listen. Just don't want do to you be know your what? sister you know or your daughter. No women have become pro sports. There's no defense. <laughs> I 
I know. I but they're, that's not true though. It's only for that small percentage of guys that there's no defense. For most guys, especially guys who don't look great, they're they're screwed. That's what the numbers say. They're not getting anything. So we're just gonna be a nation of babies, mamas, like one guy with five chicks. Yeah. yeah. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. That's tough. All right. Anything else, Johnny? Um. Yeah. Uh. We can do some calls. I was looking here. We got a few here. Um, this is going to be... I wasn't expecting to do calls, though, so this could be... Sorry, dude. I'm out of stories. You've got mail. This could be a... Uh, I have a lot of news, so we only do a couple of these, but let's just check uh. these out. We'll go, we'll go through... The, we'll experience these together. Um. All right. You, our friend with the uh, 850 area code called... I just want to tell you how many times he called. You ready for this? How are you? This is today. He called at 9.02. He called at 8.43. He called at 7.37. He called at 7.31. He called at 6.08. He called at 5.39. He called at 5.33. He called at 5.27. He called at 7 a.m. He called at 6.55 a.m. And his first call of the day was at 5.44 a.m. And now where do you today. think he's out of? Let's see what the 8.5... Oh, area code. 850? Oh, I thought it was going to be 805. No, 850. That is, uh, that's the panhandle of Florida, Tallahassee, Panama City, up that way. All right, here was his first call at 530. Or, okay, yeah. it's Ted. I'm going to just say Ted from now on. Mango do whatever. Adam Michael Carr. Adam Mike Tilly Carl. Mike. Mike Ale. Mike, like, get him recorded while he's drunk. Mike Ale. Adam. Middle name is your actual true name. Like, you think of the Lord God Almighty. So, Mike Ale, like, videotape. Well, it, it doesn't guy, it sound like he's at a party or something, like, and he's just like off in the like corner drunk. calling us on I the phone. I have no clue on what All right, this guy so is talking there's about. There's something about Oz. There's not Wizard of Oz. No, there's this guy in Omaha named Oz. <laughs> I followed him. I saw him walking with people. And then I was in a car, and then, like, I followed him, like, Oz. Well, he told me his name was Oz. And I was like, help me out, man. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? And he took me to his apartment, and he had a dog named Sim. And I cleaned the shit, because, like, Sim, the dog, his pit bull, would shit in this one room. And so it was, like, covered in shit. And then, like, I was hanging out with Oz, then Master, and then I, like, before I left, I cleaned all this shit out of So to recap, he found a guy called Oz in Omaha. He was following him. Then he got in a car and followed him. And then he got in a car with him and went back to his house Met his pit bull, his name I didn't quite catch, and somehow ended up in a room covered in pit bull shit cleaning the room. Out of the closet. That Sim, the dog. Sim, the dog. Still no doubt about it. I don't, I, I don't even know where I put it. Now, now, now who is weirder Sim, in this story? The guy whose name is Oz. The guy who, who follows the guy around because his name is Oz. Or the guy that lets this dude in his car. Like, if it's, would you let this guy who sound like he had marbles in his mouth sound like one of the guys from the fucking Simpsons, the bar fly? And like, hey, uh, let me in your car. Uh, uh, yeah, come over to my house and clean pit bull shit out of the one room. Do you know people that let dogs shit in the house? Not on purpose. But this guy's saying that the room was covered in it. Yeah, people do. They'll put paper down, like, to like uh, newspaper. No, no, I Sometimes I dream and I fart in my bed sheets and piss in my diaper. And then I mangle these. 
See, sometimes he's like lucid and coherent, and then sometimes he's just like, I don't understand what the fuck he's talking about. Yeah, I mean, well, dude, he's probably kidnapped right now by a giant uh, pit bull owning fucking weirdo. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he called earlier in the day, too. He called at 457, 422. He's talking about he talks about Joey Diaz a lot in a lot of these. Okay, I mean Sunday he called half a, a dozen times maybe. My word, you got to keep it under a minute. Yeah, Please. that's the new rule. That's the new rule. Especially if you're talking about cleaning up yeah, shit. Yeah, and you got to be able to talk. I think that should be a big. It's kind of part a requirement. Yeah, of uh, calling in. You, gotta, well, you should see Google tries to do these transcripts, and it has no idea what he's saying. Like, yes. it's just, what did, read the transcript of what Google thought okay, he yeah. was saying. Okay, hold on. Hey, hold on. I just wanted to tell on. you guys again. Right, we'll get back to that. Um, all right, here's one where. Okay. Okay, so you want me to do his voice? Okay, uh, so Sam Johnny XD XD is what he said. Check this out. I know it's the wrong show, but Satan, Kate, Kate, I'll be here everlasting my day. Ton the black keys, the everlasting your life. Date, dating, I'll be late. Okay, okay, pretty amazing. I mean, I don't, this is like some QAnon shit. I mean, I don't know if I like it or not, though. What's this loving cup by the Rolling Stones? I always like you, Rolling Stones. <laughs> it was first in the Beatles, but like when I got a more, a little Grizzlies, I like the Rolling Stones, or where is that in the love? Satellite, love, and cups is a good starting pee. All right. Peace out, brother. I love you guys so much. I forgive you for making fun of me. <laughs> I know you. I know my topic distance to this. So I love you for keeping hush, 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 hush on that shit that Calvin, you know, dude, be like, holy shit. He seems like all of God's, like, he's like new, like, what happened the other vision of the future. That's pretty, like, spiritual or something. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's kind of, I always love God. I have no problems. But my brother was in the military. I didn't want my brother to die. And, like, I saw the best way to keep my brother from dying and killed in life find him. I found it safe watching TV. In hospital bed, six months. I was really fucked up six months before. Okay. Now let's hear what he actually said. Hold on. Okay, so Sam. What's he, a Johnny rave? XD. Is it a rave or something? Check this out. I know it's the wrong show. It is. But take, take, take. I'll be your everlasting take. Oh, he's listening. To, uh, we might get dinged on this. Because right. yeah, yeah. like it's the black keys. Nobody's going to get it. that. Nobody's going to. It's Take, not going to pick I'll up. I'll be your everlasting life. Hey. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. I, I hey. don't like that song. You don't like that song? I love the black, key, the key, black keys. I saw them twice last year. But Pretty I don't amazing. Like I mean, I don't know if I like it or not, though. No, I'm with you. What's this? Loving Cup by the Rolling Stones? I always liked the Rolling Stones. I was first in the Beatles, but, like, when I got a, more, a little more grizzled, I was like, the Rolling Stones. All right. So, what this is, is he's got his own podcast. You see, dude, what you should be doing is recording all of this and then putting this out as a podcast. Yeah, I Instead, totally agree Because you're just wasting that. it in our voice. Master. I totally agree with that. You should for sure have your own uh, YouTube channel. In fact, you sound just like somebody who has a successful YouTube channel, I must say. Who? You know who he sounds like. I, I don't know who he sounds like. <laughs> that guy who pirates, like, video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't even know what his name is. I, I know what you're talking about. But you know what I'm talking He sounds just like him. Yeah, he does. He does, he does, he does. Go on, next one. I like hearing you. Hey, yo, 97% of our presidents were Masons. They're responsible for laundering trillions of dollars from the nation in the construction of underground. Is that the abductions of cattle mutilation? Experiments on human patients take place in several subterranean bases, 150 stories below a basement. 
with genetic information. You need to fear science, not Satan. Cause through the manipulation of certain biological agents, they create strange creations. Top secret special operations and low frequency sounds and lasers and motherfuckers like Carl Sagan that didn't believe in the Drake equation. Trying to keep Western civilization on a need to no basis. Well, you need to know that this is a game and we're being portrayed and played in the worst way. I love it. That's I'm fantastic. In. I'm yeah. in. Who didn't, is that? Can't even leave a name. Come on, dude. You gotta leave a name, bro. You just spin bars. Three six zero area code with the three six zero four six nine. Wonderful stuff there. By the way, Johnny, you see the sweatshirt I wear? Number one sweatshirt for hot moms to say they like it. Really? Yeah. This anti jacks jacks club. Fascinating. Wouldn't have guessed that. All the time, women are like, I love your sweatshirt. Really? Yeah, all the time. That's so that's so surprising. To I'm me. like, thank you, mama. That is surprising to me. Number one. Um, Sam, stop leaving early. What did he tell you to do? Sam, stop. No, no, no. What? Stop leaving early, maybe? I don't. Is that it? That's all he said, yeah. Wow. People get really upset when I try to leave it. Uh, real quick, so pretty much the alarm is the sound that makes us... Oh, wait, hold on. No, you can't... You, dude, you left us six minutes of voicemail. That's too much, man. We can't do that. All right. Anyway, that's enough. We, that's, I, I, when I don't have a chance to look through them, I, it takes Dude, that was great. That was, uh, that was uh, curious. I'll say that. that was, I enjoyed that it. That was something. You want to read some reviews? Let's yeah, let's read some, some reviews. Reviews. I was moving. I didn't live a lot of life this week. I'm sorry. Moving is the worst. It is the worst. It's one of my least favorite things. I have to go change my address. Oh, change of address? Yeah, so you get your mail forwarded. Yeah, if I got to do you that. You won't get your mail forwarded. Yeah, I got to do that now. You'll miss some bills and important shit. Like he, by, by, to be clear, he says, I got to do that now. He's going to do that now on his computer while we're doing the show. Yeah, I Sam, am. Sam multitasks. Thank you. All right. Uh, five stars from Midwest Nader. I love to hear you like Slayer, Sam. So Johnny need a nut up and realize what good music is. Ha ha. Just kidding. Love you too, bud. Metalhead for life. Underground forever. Love it. <laughs> You're not going to like this. Uh, I trigger TV. Johnny is carrying the show. <laughs> uh, tell me more. Sam's approach to being a conspiracy theorist is to say the opposite of mainstream media call things weird or strange, never provide a date so as not to be wrong, and 100% agree with anything and everyone. Great so, Johnny. <laughs> dude, who wrote that? I trigger TV. Okay, dude. Good, good, good. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks. Was that a five-star review? It was a five-star okay, review. Okay, you can say whatever you want. That's the rule. Yeah. That's fine. He's uh, saying you're too vague in your, your statements is what no, he's saying. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. What do you want me to get? My now, what You think he's doing... You think... That Sam has some kind of plan and he's intentionally vague. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't remember the dates. That's what it is. He hears all this shit and he can't remember the numbers. He's I can't not a, remember the number. It's okay. He's not. There's I'm, no my, intent My hard there. drive is full. It's not malicious or like done with yeah, some great I, plan. I just show up and hope. Yeah, there's no intent. I have no podcast that I show up with a set plan of what I'm going to do. That's why it's great to me. I just show up. That's now, I'm going to be honest with you, Johnny. I don't think I've been, been very good on this episode today. I think it hasn't been my best episode. <laughs> Daddy's having a hard time today. I'm trying to spit it, but I just can't get in gear. I know what you mean. We just have those sometimes. I feel like I don't. It feels like incredibly late or something. It's not, but it's. Well, just you feels know what really it late. is, man? It's just like this show is predicated on us having a fun week of chaos. And it just... I'm really tired, too. Honestly. Yeah. I don't have a lot of yeah. energy. Yeah. My yeah. girl just got back from being out of town for like four days. And as soon as she got back, I had to leave. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah. Uh, Embry 8, five stars. From Embry. Well, you, we, your name's on there Damn. already, so you don't have to say that. I love the show. Been listening for a couple of months along with TFH. I started from the beginning a couple of weeks ago, and I'm currently listening to the Peanut Butter Hair episode. Remember? Oh, that my ago? God. How far... What up? What is he listening to? The peanut, remember when you had peanut butter hair yeah. and we talked about it? On Punch Drunk? What? No. On this, this, show. Show. this show. I, I had peanut butter hair on no, this you, show. No, we talked about it. Oh, and yeah, that was, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about that being your, your you know, your difficult time for you. Yeah, that was, a, that was I regret that. 
<laughs> you guys get uh, get me through my work days easier. I just ordered the Grateful Dead tinfoil shirt. Uh, can't wait for that to come. You guys rock. Sam needs to visit the Midwest soon. Didn't you just visit the yeah, Midwest? Yeah, I did. You in I Minneapolis need to go soon? back. Guys, I've been really slacking. He wants you in of, Omaha, Nebraska. That's what I have a buddy of mine who wants me to go there. I want to go there, too. It's just I haven't had time. I just, like, I have to start booking myself more, so I'm just... I haven't been working on it. All right, now here's this guy again, Z-Man, another five-star review. We found out, we thought maybe this was Chad trying to get booked on a show. It's not Chad. I talked to Chad. It's another Z-Man. Yeah. uh, Here's another five stars until you invite me on the show. First of all, you don't understand how threats work if you think that we're going to let you on the show until you stop giving us (laughs) five-star reviews. That's not how threats work. Hold on, hold on. So he wants to come on this show? I, here's another five stars until you invite me on the show. Come to Detroit. You guys can stay at my house. Respect. I am, I'm trying to go to the house of comedy there. I don't know why they won't book me. I don't know. But anyway, you're not getting on the show. If, I mean, your strategy is to leave us five-star reviews. I don't know. Yeah. I, well, this is like, actually, he's he's a nice guy. Thank you for the five-star No, he's reviews. a nice guy, clearly. He's got great taste but this in is, this podcasts. This is the whole thing that happens because it's like going back to that. And this isn't about him. This is just like content creating is, again, combat content, right? Where it's like, it's cloud chasing. So like, you know, you always get like some new podcast. Especially you don't do that, though. I don't do it. I, I'm not into I it. I kind of wish we would do a little more of it, honestly. Like that episode just, where you went at Bobby Lee, we killed that. That was a huge episode, big numbers. Yeah, but but I, I do it as a defense when I have to defend myself. Right, you do but, it out of genuine interest. Like, but in I just feel like conflict, once you yeah. start chasing that, Johnny, you, that is becomes your thing, and you just end up in the corner. It doesn't have to be, though. It doesn't have to I be. don't know, bro. I'm not really into it. Stern built an empire on it, and yeah, now I he's know. interviewing celebrities and licking their butt holes on you. But I just... I don't know, man. Opie and Anthony. I mean, that was their whole. Yeah, that's just not me. Well, I think it's that's how you get your audience. Then you move on from it. You, know? you want to start ripping people? Not, not all the time. Just the, when I, I think you. I do think that you, when you have something legitimate criticism, you often won't share it because you don't want to be seen as doing that. And I think when you have a legitimate criticism of somebody, you shouldn't be afraid to, to put it out there. All right. For but that I reason. just also don't do it all the time. Don't do it to like get. I just from. like I just feel like, I, I, you know, when I get shit and like if it's if it's legit, I'll, I'll watch it. And OK, that's interesting. But most of it is just clout chasing bullshit. You know, like you, know, yeah. you see it a lot with these kind of uh, new conspiracy podcasts, right, where they like try to clout chase. And it's just like, hey, dude, I'll have you on my podcast. I have people on all the time that have very small followings. I like to help everybody make it. A sure way not to get on it is the fucking shit talk. And it's just like, good luck. It's just, it's, it's just. But well, there's a line between what you're talking about. Those people have been saying really like genuinely negative and wrong things, and then just gentle ribbing. You know, like, uh, like a. A sharp elbow, you know. I mean, we ri- yeah, we ribbed a little. I don't know, man. like getting into somebody's ass a little. Yeah, okay, anyway. we'll figure it out. Detonators, five stars, boom, boom, clap back. The two of these casters, I don't know what that means, are some of the hardest working in the game. Dude, well, you don't know what these two casters mean? I don't know what that Podcasters. is. Podcasters. Oh, oh, okay. You and me. I was thinking like the wheels on like a like the a, bus go round and round. No, no, casters are wheels that uh, are on like a. Oh, like a coffee table or something. Oh, you thought this guy was like a. a I know too dude. many words, Sam. You, okay, you I'm sorry. You thought this guy was doing U-Haul comedy. I apologize for knowing too many words. I'm sorry. You, Chemistry you do. is explosive. Thank well, you. Sounds like diarrhea. Yeah. Thanks for all the cast. <laughs> it really is the diarrhea of <laughs> podcasting. Broken sin, the diarrhea of podcasting. By the way, what is the order you do all of these pods? Oh, okay. Well, we could talk about that. Our schedule. Uh, it changed recently. It's constantly changing. Yeah. Uh, it's it's. What is your order? Because you do more than I do. I'm, I only do the ones that. So as it's set right now, Mondays I do early. I do fire and the kid. Fire and the kid? No, it's fire. I do it with Callan. I do I do conspiracy, conspiracy social, social club. club. Then at one night, up one one taping. Like one one taping. Okay. And then the, later tonight I do uh, I do broken sim. Which is what we're doing right now. We started at ten o'clock uh, this episode. It's eleven forty four. PM now. So, and then in the morning, I go back and do Conspiracy Social Club. 
Then I'll do cash. You started out only doing one a week of that, right? And then it moved to two a week. Is that yeah, right? no. yeah. No, we we always did two. Oh, really? Always. The, huh. They were mostly Tuesdays and Thursdays, but because Callen started to do uh, Crowder, he had he couldn't be in L.A. on Tuesdays, and then it just worked out. So got it. Okay. Uh, Monday, then, Tuesdays, get it, bang it so out. So Tuesday, you get up, do Conspiracy Social Club, and then right after that, what you come home and do, do Cash, cash Daddies. Daddies. And then both I'm, of the Conspiracy Social Clubs are in studio, though, right? Yeah. Where's that studio? So the, it's in Calabasas. Oh, okay. But where I live now, it's ten minutes. Oh, that's great. Okay. Oh, it works uh, you perfect. must be loving that. Oh, dude, it works perfect. So that's Johnny, we've talked about this before on the show. So I'm still driving out there, so I had to remember what the exit was. So I put it in my GPS, right? Johnny, you know we always talk about how like big tech and big oil work together to get you drive around to burn off gas. I think it's that in the city too, tra- managing traffic. Yeah, go ahead. Dude, I'm telling you, man, it took me on this. Bilbo Baggins type <laughs> journey to try to find a studio. I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is the most. What app did you use? Google Maps. Google Maps. And that's, they're the ones that you say are supposed to be better, right? Well, that's what my cousin, who was like, who's 17, was like, dude, you use Waze? You're so old. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Waze is old, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Google Maps is what the kids are doing. No kidding. But by the way, uh, so do you, uh, do you remember a Voorhees? Voorhees, the guy, they, they, Jason Voorhees. No, not the, not the, uh, not the Friday Thirteenth guy. But uh, I think his name's Zach Voorhees. Oh right? yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The we, Google he, whistleblower. Tim Foyle. Tim Foyle yeah. had him on. Yeah. So he had a. If you look up his Twitter, he had an interesting. You tweet. You want me to look up his Twitter? Yeah, he had an interesting tweet. It was about how um, Google is starting to like pull back on spending, and according to him, it's because. They're getting their dicks kicked in by Chat GPT. What? This might be right here. Google is spiraling because of Chat GPT. Yeah, that's it. They can't catch up because the whole company has been on high security lockdown since my Google leaks. It's now a bureaucratic nightmare. All they had to do was not be evil, go woke, go broke. And then he's linking a CNBC story there. Um, now, I will say there was news this week that Google was uh, their AI product, which is meant to compete with ChatGPT. A lot of people quit because it was just ripping off ChatGPT. A lot of the inputs were for stuff from ChatGPT, which was open source. Uh, so was hold a big on. Controversy there. Say they that. Were, they were basically ripping off ChatGPT, even though they said they weren't. And they got busted doing it? Well, I don't I don't know if it's sourced. Like I don't know if it was actually reported, but uh, that was that was what I heard. So do you think that Google could be in trouble? Because isn't there something about Apple also screwed all these right guys? Here. Google is accused of ripping off OpenAI's chat GPT. This is from Android Authority, but it's been reported elsewhere. Um, Google has been accused of training its AI chatbot, Bard, stupid name, on data from OpenAI's chat GPT without authorization. According to the information, that's a good source, uh, a guy, Jacob Devlin there, who is a Google AI researcher, resigned because the company scraped ChatGPT data from a website called ShareGPT. Devlin quit after sharing concerns with Pachai, Sundar Pachai, Dean, and other senior managers that the BARD team, which received assistance from brain employees, was training its machine learning model using data from OpenAI's ChatGPT, the report states. Uh, yeah. Such nerd dork shit, right? Yeah, I find it fascinating. You do? Yeah. So what do you think that means? That they just can't come up with anything good? So they're just jacking it? You know, I just I think this technology, chat GPT, is like the iPhone. It's so far advanced of everything else that was out there. It's so far, you know, beyond them that the only thing it's what Android had. Remember like the first droid phones? They were just ripping off iPhones basically. That's what that's what they're doing. They have to to get catch up. So then the iPhone also doesn't allow these companies to steal the data now too either, right? Well, yeah, I mean they're they're that's their whole they design everything yeah to keep that from happening. There's the story that Zach was linking to Google to cut down on employee laptops, services, and staplers for multi-year sa- staplers even for multi-year savings is what they're calling. Oh my god! So I guess Google's god. really cutting, tightening their belts. That seems crazy when and you Google, cut back on 
Staplers? Yeah, Google is, you know, well known as one of the, like the most uh, employee friendly companies. You know, you get all these services when you go there, lavish cafeteria, showers, you know, gym. So this is, uh, yeah, it's a warning for sure, like a worry. How are these kids right. going to get by? How are they going <laughs> to yeah, handle really. sharing yeah. staplers? Um, okay, here's what MK3D13, maybe the best show ever on planet Earth. Can't get enough. These two have the best chemistry out there that will make you laugh. Johnny, please don't listen to Sam when he wants to leave, as I love the new segment, and Sam always wants to leave early. He hates this. Keep up the great work. I love you guys, and I listen to all your podcasts, by the way. That's MK. Hey, will you do me a favor? Johnny, will you look up, you know, not that we're as big as them in any way possible, but will you look up, like, two bears, one cup? Are you going to say how long the podcast is? How long is? are those podcasts? Okay. <laughs> to be fair, those are guys who, like, Burt Kreischer's making movies. You know what I mean? The guy's got demands on okay. his time. Theo Vaughn. I'll, let's go to Joe Rogan, the biggest podcaster on the planet. Okay, let's look yeah, at his we know podcast. that's three hours, buddy. We know that. No, it gets longer than that, i Okay, say. how about you, Theo Vaughn? Let's go look at Theo Joe Vaughn. Rogan first, though, just to see how long his average podcast is. Let's see. <sighs> Johnny, you're That's a, a real question. piece of shit today. You <laughs> I knew to what you were that. trying to do. I knew what you were trying to you're, do. You're, I'm just telling you that. I checkmated you before you could oh, checkmate no, no, me. No, no, you didn't checkmate happened. nothing. I checkmated you before no, you uh, could checkmate me, sir. How long is the average? Look at that. Joe Rogan. Three podcast. hours, four hours. A four-hour podcast. Wow. Would you believe it? Million views on that four-hour podcast. This is from uh, Story 94. How What's the average podcast length? The average length of a podcast is 36 minutes. That's because that's like news stuff. That's counting like the Johnny, people that put one minute we news clips on there. Almost four of those. Let's see. Two bears, one cave. I will look this up in the spirit of genuine curiosity here. Um, let's see what a two bears, one cave is with the uh, prominent filmmaker, Tom Segura. There's one here that's an hour 30. Let's see what this one is with the guest David Cross. Hour 14, hour 23, hour 11, hour 21. Well, that that's what works for them. That's not how we no, said. Okay. That's not how we there, started there this show. There is a two-hour one. There it is. Hour 53. Good for them. Good yeah, for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, And we started this. Uh, we established this and, and earned, uh, you know, a listenership with three-hour podcasts. And now we're uh, taking that away from them. I'm glad you wanted to bring this up on the show. It should, no it should lead to some great feedback no. for you on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's five stars, Stone Creation. Johnny Woodard presents Broken Sam. <laughs> I don't know why you started doing that. This show is great. Uh, from the news stories that keep Sam up to late, too late, to the shout outs of all you. the five star reviews and the call ins. And then he put our phone number up there. That's 657 339 1338. Nobody does it better. Eventually, we will all get to see Sam fight somebody for charity. Hopefully, it will be against Jared from Subway. And the fight I will, will be. I will fight him for charity. <laughs> the fight will be sponsored by Jersey Mike's and the JoJo of Comedy. The JoJo? The Dojo of Comedy. I, I still think it should have been called the Comedy Dojo. Uh, no, personally. it shouldn't, dude. My new favorite segment is by. <laughs> Remember that the where we just hang up on people? That's funny. Uh, the friends he calls more than likely end up talking to themselves for 30 seconds after he hung up. <laughs> Keep up the good work, gentlemen, and don't forget to get your next Brazilian wax. Uh, Keep the shit flying out clean, he says. <laughs> uh, well, now is it? I imagine it's a lot better not to be hairy back there with a bidet, oh, so with, much uh, but with a bidet because then you're, you oh, don't have yeah. like wet oh, hair. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude, it's the best, bro. I love it. T Bone Shimon. <laughs> That's a good name. T Bone Shimon. Wow. Carjacking. Hey guys, thanks for making beating off in the car perfectly normal and cool. TJ from Salt Lake. Thank you. You know, Thank if we've you. accomplished one thing here, I, I think that's probably the most important. We want to make the freaks feel welcome. That's my opinion. Mayor McDick Cheese. <laughs> All things serve the beam. This might be the best podcast out there. Bigfoot Theater is the most genius skit I've ever heard. Thank you. I was there for the first one, and I'll stay till the end. We need more Sam Tripoli traffic court, though. 
Thanks for everything, guys. Long days and pleasant nights. P.S. I might be in the minority, but I'm not a great fan of the guests. Always skip those parts. Okay, well, noted. Yeah, oh, well, we very rarely have guests. Yeah, we very rarely do. It's nice uh, to change you know, it up. So uh, Johnny, I've had my car for about four months, and I still haven't put the license plate on it. <laughs> Are you serious? I still have the paper <laughs> license plate. And they, you haven't gotten it yet? I think I should go down and put That's it funny. on. You know they have... Uh, they have a digital license plate now where you can like change the colors of uh, the and you you don't have to go get your car registered it just automatically beams it to Oh your, really? Yeah, isn't that cool? Oh, that's going to be great when It's you're... expensive though, dude. It's really expensive. Of course. Wait, wait 3 years then it'll be cheap. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, this is 4 stars. We don't read 4 stars. I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, 5 stars. Carlotta's way. Sammy T's coming to San Diego in June, not May, he says. Hey, Sam and Johnny, we love you. My husband and I are avid listeners to all of your podcasts. But, Sam, you made guesses on one of your podcasts that you'd be in our hometown of San Diego May 5th or 6th or 7th. Uh, and that would have been the hubby's birthday weekend, so I was pumped to surprise him with your show. Quick disclaimer, he has the piercings that make him seem suspicious to your standards, but he's a grandma rescuing scholar. I've seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> and yes, And yes, he's into butt stuff, but he's a top. See? See? <laughs> but can't wait to watch you live uh, again. Sam and Johnny, come down with your girlfriend to San Diego. Y'all are legit as balls podcasters. Thank Carlotta's you. way. Thank you, Carlotta's way. I appreciate you. Kevlar one one three. New favorite but pod. Johnny, by the way, I'm I'm right on nose piercing. Yeah, you ended she said you weren't right, but then you were right. Yeah, so I was right. Confused about that. He is a top, but he is in the butt stuff. Butt stuff yeah. It could be giving butt stuff, but it's most likely taking butt stuff. <laughs> Johnny is it's pegging still gay. Butt stuff. Is pegging gay? Hmm. If a woman pegs you, is it gay? The only way to know is the act itself is neither gay nor not gay. What is gay is what you're thinking when she's pegging you. If she's pegging you and you're thinking about a man pegging you, what if you're thinking, is this gay? <laughs> that might be gay, actually. It depends on what you what you decide eventually, I guess. Yeah, I'm not gonna say somebody's like, let's gay. Let's just say like you don't come instantly, right? Let's say it takes a while. I think you're not gay, dude. But I if match, you come really quickly, I matched with this older woman on Tinder one time. Oh, really? Like what's she, older to you? She's like mid 40s or something, like okay. older than me. As well. Okay, I was probably like 30 at the time or something. And that was, she eventually got around to telling me she's she maybe 40, pegging. actually 40. She likes a peg. Now listen, like, let's. Like, I was, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, because that's not John. Even though, even though no, people no. in the South think you're gay, you're not. No, nobody thinks I'm gay. <laughs> so nobody thought I was so, gay. So I wonder if they help you clean out your butt before you. Yeah. I don't even want to think about it. By the way, I did a funny joke on Kellen Show, and he smirked, but he refused to give it any credit. He wouldn't laugh. Yeah. You guys, I, I've noticed like you guys who are hard in comics, I don't laugh like ton at other comics when they're I joking. love laughing at other comics. But a lot of I'm them don't. I'm an easy laugh. A lot of them don't, though. Well, I think it's the joke. Like, that... Rogan never... That dude, like... If, no, it if depends. You're to... If Rogan loves you, if he loves you, he'll laugh at everything. But I've seen, like, people being really... The, ah! That's like, okay. Like, even, like, Shane Gillis sometimes will be saying really funny shit, and Rogan I just won't give it to him. I don't know. So it's a, Everybody's different, dude. There's some people he just rolls over, yeah, and then sense. there's other people he just, like, nope, try harder. Kevlar one one three new favorite pod. He says I came here for sweet Sammy T, but I stayed for Juicy Johnny. Oh. Juicy Johnny, that's the new name, bro. One of the best duos out there. Juicy right. Johnny is the best name Everybody's possible. There, it's in all the. Uh, okay, yeah, I did. Says uh, five stars. Brothers from other mothers. Sweet Sammy T and Juicy Johnny. I've been listening uh, to you since the beginning, and you guys keep me laughing with all the what the effing all the day long. I don't know what that means. Johnny, I love the show. Juicy Johnny, the way the way you guys meander from subject to subject this sounds like a compliment uh, <laughs> while chasing rabbit holes and dropping hella jokes in between is what keeps me coming back I know you gotta leave in like three minutes Sam but Johnny has two more news stories so hang in there yeah, homie. We, we haven't even done the news stories we're almost two, we're much, two hours much in. love from K Kentucky I think we uh, read dude, that one last I'm week I'm gonna actually. be honest with you dude I think we talked it before Kentucky is underrated I, I've only been there a couple times. Like I, I don't have a lot. I of like Kentucky. I would move to Kentucky, home, home of Rand Paul, the uh, senator who's. Uh, What's he, his... He's against this uh, TikTok bill. He yeah, he's against, against it, it, but he's also for like Pompeo. 
Mike Pompeo. Yeah, yeah, you're like, what are you doing? Yeah, he's all, he's all he plays the game for sure. Uh, yeah, even Pump. though they keep trying to stab him. Yeah, I, I mean, he's had a weird life. That's got to be a weird life, right? Being Ron, Ron Paul. Oh, Sawyer. I got another story I want to talk about. Have I talked about this oh, on good. this podcast? How, how how could I possibly know what <laughs> what it is before you even? What are you talking about? Shut up, Johnny. What just happened? I didn't say anything. I oh, this you just one killed now. the lights. I didn't kill the lights. What have you done? You stepped on something. Oh, it's okay. oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> go on Google. There's a tab that says, "Why are podcasts so long?" Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. What? Well, well, okay. Well, tell me the thing, then, and I'll tell you if you've told me. Uh Dude, this is uh, um. So, so did you see the Burt Kreischer? Thing on uh, Andrew Schultz. No, uh, I haven't watched it yet, but people have been telling about Bert has a giant fear of clowns. I think he's talked about that before. Yeah. So Andrew Schultz, because Tom Score told me he should do it, brought a clown in with balloons, and it fucked Did up it, Bert. Really? Okay, let's watch that. My uh, baseball coach in middle school was had a great fear of clowns. What do you think that comes from? I think it's like childhood uh, trauma. Like you got? Uh, do you think Bert got molested by a clown? I mean, it's entirely pot. It's anything like that. It could be. Is that okay. gonna be the weirdest feeling ever? Because Aubrey Marcus, his dad, ran sex stores. Right. right. And says, "What the f?" <laughs> 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 He's really going through I've never it. seen Bert look this uncomfortable. Either, when I yeah. called up Tom, I said, Tom, what would be something fun we could do with Bert? <laughs> because, oh, he hates balloons and he hates clouds. You can't smell that. No, you can't what? smell that. No, no what? The balloons. You can't smell that. The balloons. They do stink. And they're going to start popping, dude. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna start popping. I'm gonna, I gotta, I'm gonna have to leave. You think it's real? <laughs> Give me the beer. Give me the beer. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. You gotta drink more let's beer. Stop, like how much of that is like him leaning into real. anything? And how much of that is real? Because Aubrey Marcus. Yeah, he really, uh, dude. Uh, uh, my buddy called me up today and told me about this, and he said he was shook for 30 minutes. Like, who the F wants to be a clown well, like, at children's like parties? Why is Bert so afraid of clowns? There's some, there, yeah, like, let me like Google what that. happened? Like, I'm sure there's a reason why. Why are some people He got jerked off by a clown. Of clowns. The oversized lips and eyebrows distort the face, so the brain perceives it as a human, but slightly off. The oddness as is heightened. As a demon. The, maybe. The oddness is heightened by a clown's bizarre costume, in addition, clowns are highly unpredictable as well as mischievous, which puts people on edge. So there you go. So it's a deep-seated... I do. You know, if you see somebody and their face is, like, warped, or if you see an image of somebody, it's like their smile's too wide. Or, yeah. You know, their eyes isn't are that too like big. A, isn't that like... Was it a horror film? Smile? I watched it. It's great. Yeah, it's very scary. Isn't that the whole point? Well, not really. I mean, they do have a weird smile, but it's a normal smile that okay. you could make. All it's right, just, all right. It's just locked on their face. They get all the smile locked on their face, and then they try to kill people. Johnny, you got 15 minutes for stories. That is ridiculous. I told you before this, I had a lot of stories. Okay, dude, then you should have gone off on clowns. I didn't do that. You did. I did do that, but that... Okay, let's go, dude. News, news, news. Um, you know, AirTags, people were thought, thinking, like, what will people do with these new Apple trackers? You know what I like to do with AirTags? I like to put it on my skin tags. That's so dumb. You're so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, Fox News, here's what people are doing with AirTags. Texas man, of course, uses Apple AirTag to track down person who stole his truck, then kill him. According to police. Oh, my God. Police in San Antonio said a man killed another man who allegedly stole his truck after tracking the thief with an Apple AirTag. The San Antonio Police Department said the incident happened on Wednesday on the city's southeast side at a shopping center, according to KHOU. The truck's owner used an Apple AirTag tracking device to see where the truck was located. Officials said that they had uh, received a stolen vehicle report around 1 p.m. on Wednesday. Out of a home in North San Antonio, police said that the truck's owner used the air track to track the vehicle nearly 20 miles from where it was stolen. The alleged thief was not aware that the vehicle was being tracked. 
Authorities found several bullet casings and two cars with their windows shot out. Officials are trying to decide if the suspect's going to be charged in the shooting. So. Do you think you should be charged? Don't know anything about what happened, so I couldn't possibly say. Johnny, that's very, very boring of you. Well, that's that's the rules of the Ronin. You don't uh, judge respect, anything that you weren't Johnny, the witness. Respect, Johnny. You wrote that. them. You should know that. I did. It's respect on Use that. Use your own rules against you. Then. But that sounds like every Liam Neeson movie, but instead of kids, it's a car. And he just went, don't take my car. This is John Wick, John bro. John Wick, yeah, yeah. This is a John Wick. I bet you this guy just saw John Wick 4 and said, today's the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Wick 4 is great. If I like, the today's the day, I go, I go Neo from the Matrix on you guys. <laughs> it's so good, John Wick 4. This is story. It? My friend was like, the plot sucks. I'm like, it's no, John no, Wick. No, no, no. It's, it's good, dude. It's good. It doesn't need a plot. John, Wick, It's just John Wick, and he beats the shit out of everybody, and it's great. How about how to do with the movies? I heard it crushed, right? I think so. It, I mean, it certainly wiped out uh, Shazam or whatever. That poor Shazam guy was trying to plead with people to go see it. Oh, really? Like, it was really sad. Yeah, he was like, oh, hold on, I'll show you. And he actually got in a little trouble because somebody cut together it to make it look like he was shitting on John Wick. Uh, but he wasn't shitting on it John Wick. It took in $73.5 And a worldwide one point three one hundred and thirty seven. Here, but here's no. the... Uh, he wasn't talking shit about John Wick. He, he was just trying to get people to go see his movie. But it was just, I mean, it reeked of desperation. This little video he put out on uh, on his social media. Let me see if I can. Where's the here movie? And if you've already seen it, go see it again. In fact, honestly, if, if you, we would really, I could really, <laughs> I, I would really appreciate people going and supporting this movie in lieu of the fact that there are a lot of people that just don't know. They, the, however it all sliced, there's a lot of people, I've been getting DMs, they didn't even know the movie was coming out. Which is weird, you know, because if you live in a place like L.A. or New York, you see billboards all over the place. But maybe they weren't everywhere. I don't know. But, but it's out. It's there. And this He's weekend, desperate. I think John Wick comes out. Listen, I love Keanu Reeves. If you want to go see John Wick, knock your, go for it. I mean, I, I'm not going to tell you not to. But John Wick's not a family movie. <laughs> so if you're looking so for sad. a movie for your family or uh, your date or whatever, or you just want, don't want to get into like hardcore, you know, pop, 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 um, go see Shazam Fury of the Gods. Please, you will thoroughly please go enjoy see it. Shazam. It is a throwback to all of the movies that we knew and loved when gonna, we were grown up in the 90s and 90s, guys. It, it's Amblin, it's Lucas They're Stone. not going to let me make any more like movies. Is go it a perfect it, film? Please. No, I don't. I, I'm hard pressed to think of uh, uh, perfect films. But Godfather we are a far better film than some of these critics, reviewers. See, what happened was they cut it right there him talking about John Wick and then him saying we are a far better film and they passed it around and he got like some people shit on him even this one actor Anson Mount like, have him. given us credit for and those of you who have seen the movie know this and those of you who haven't seen the movie are in for a treat well you know what anyway, the problem is I feel is, bad for the guy I know maybe he made a lot of money doing the movie nah but he, he seems like desperate or something like he's you can tell well I mean like yeah, I mean, the, another payday isn't going to be there, no. but what he's... The first one was good. I really liked the first well, one. Ha have you seen the second no, one? No, the because reviews John are terrible. Because John Wick came out, right? Yeah, and the reviews were terrible. And, and, I would have well, seen it. When the, the guy reviews. goes, is it a perfect movie? Where? What is a perfect movie? Godfather 2. So so the point is this, dude. It's probably has very... Uh, it has to do with uh, some of the critiques. It's 51% rating. Not bad on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, exactly half the critics liked it. But it's like, the, it's like superhero movies aren't in with people right now. They're not. Because they've right. gone so woke. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know what it is, man? I, for whatever reason, John, you know, Keanu Reeves in John Wick fix, fits the archetype for a, a hero in an action film. That guy doesn't. And that, and the reason I bring that up is because Marvel and, and, and DC are trying to shove anti-hero heroes down our throats in, ter yeah. in terms of like, here's this nerd dork beating up everybody and this waif model that's beating everybody up or this guy that looks like he works at... Hurts rent a car beating everybody up. I mean, I'll be honest with you. In John Wick, there are women beating the shit out of no, big but, guys a but lot. But it's not sold on that. Yeah. Do you understand? You don't look at John Wick as as a a, uh, a, a, a a superhero movie. It's an action flick. Yeah. 
by the, the there's the guy who plays Yip Man in uh, those kung fu movies is in this as the blind assassin. He's so good, man. He's a big part of this movie. He's like the second lead probably. And he's so do you ever you ever seen those Yip Man yeah, you know, yeah, IP? Yeah. Yeah, and, and he's in. He's got a huge role in this. And I can't he, wait dude, to see he it. Just, I mean, he carries Asians big parts of Asians are crushing it. In movies right now. I love that guy. He's so he's just funny and uh, it's it's everything I love about. Oh, you know, I gotta go see like, John Wick. Like, then. Uh, I'm mad that I didn't see Avatar in the movie theaters. Is it still there? Probably, I I don't know. I, I I didn't like Avatar, so I didn't watch the new one. Um, this story really pissed me off because I can't believe shit like this is still happening. Actually, I can, but. Listen, Sam, this will make you uh, annoyed. East Hampton superintendent candidate offer revoked. So this guy was, he went through the process, was going to be hired as a superintendent for a big job in East Hampton, wherever the hell that is, Massachusetts, some damn place, who knows. Uh, yeah, Massachusetts. I'm just going to read this. The offer to the final candidate for the superintendent of East Hampton Public Schools was rescinded Thursday. Candidate Vito Perone told Western Mass News that they voted to rescind the offer in an executive session. Here's the reason. Allegedly, a perceived microaggression in an email he sent to school committee members. Do you know what it was? What? He called them ladies in an email. Are and they he, all women? And he didn't get the job. Who knows? I don't know. Let me let me go. Let's go on and read. What really rankled me was the people, the community of East Hampton has always been supportive and welcoming, Perone said. Uh, Vito was left Vito Perone was left in shock Thursday after his offer to become the uh, school district uh, superintendent was rescinded. He told Western Mass News he was notified by the chairperson of the school committee that his offer would be taken away due to an email he sent to the cool school committee chairperson and executive assistant to the committee. We attained a copy of the email that lists negotiations, including more vacation time. Uh, he explained the main focus was him addressing the school committee as, quote, ladies at the beginning of the email. She explained to me that they were insulted by the address and I said, well, I grew up in a time, the 60s, 70s, when ladies and gentlemen was a term of respect, Perone said. That's how I intended it. I didn't mean to insult you and was basically told my apology didn't mean anything and they were going to rescind the offer. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. Do you want to go work there for the, those people? And he was a principal at the school in the town. You know, he, he's like got a great ties to the community and everything. And they, I feel bad for that guy. They took it away from him because in what an they email, want to said, say, like, yo, yo, what do you, I, I guess you have to list everything. You have to say, uh, dear sirs and madams and it's and, and they's and zers and zems and, and, you know, transitioning people. It's just dumb. And it's just like, this is what happens when we have to make sure everybody's happy. What happens is nobody's happy. Nobody's happy. And then it's you get stupid. stupid shit like I got to go. We've done two news stories. Uh, this is what did you know that pansexual, this new thing, is like a one up of bisexual? Like, so for a long time, bisexual was the edgy thing, you know, it's like you're interested in all yeah, the genders. Yeah, yeah. But then they, then pansexual came along and, like, well, we're not just interested in the two gender, we're interested in anything else you could possibly imagine. And they, like, one up, the, there's like rivalry between the bisexuals and the yeah, pansexuals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't that interesting? No, it is interesting. It's like, it's, it's. I found that out because the girl that is the hot Asian in John Wick, the new movie, she changed her designation from bisexual to pansexual. Like, she one upped herself. Well, you know, it's my whole opinion is like, prove it. <laughs> prove it. Uh. Prove it. She's like a mu she's a this you'll see her. She's like a huge uh music like pop star in UK and Europe. Prove it. Prove Show it. me what weird shit you're shoving into weird places. I'm so sick of the like I remember that there was this one woman she was in a band nobody cared about. So she hired a publicist and she's and she was a hot young chick probably around 22 23 and she's like I'm bisexual. And like it got no traction cuz that's not edgy, especially. No. What are you saying? What was that mean? Yeah, you made, like. There's nothing like. Whoa, brave! Thank you. You made out with chicks. Whoa! I eat out chicks and do I do coke off of NBA dicks? Yay! You're 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 edgy. This one I'll just hit really quickly. But hold on, pansexual. Uh, prove it. Show us something weird you humped. <laughs> something weird you humped. <laughs> 
Right. Like a tree or something? Yeah, yeah something. Yeah. Show me just you grinding on bark or something. Ugh. No, no. Uh, dude, I mean, I'm so sick and tired of everyone acting like they're crazy. Ooh, I'm, cra I'm pansexual. I'm crazy. No, you're just a shit talker, and you you can't back it up. What do you think about the Trans Day of Vengeance? What do you think about that? I think it's the Do you most think that was real? No. I, don't I think someone told me 4chan started that. I don't and think And idiots real. ran with it. Yeah. And it's all just meant to get us to fight And then with they each pretended other. they got canceled, but really it was never going to happen. But it was never going to go. And on top of that... There just it, aren't enough trans people. There's just not enough trans, bro. Yeah. There's just not enough trans. Trans Day of Vengeance is like five By the way, homeless people, you know, milling around down in the square. I mean, there's just not enough people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just it's just this thing where like people who rich kids who hate their dad just are trying to find something to give them meaning. So they wake up in the morning and they pick protecting trans kids, even though there's like twenty of them. Dude, yeah. there's listen to me. There's more homeless people. Then there are trans people, even more than gay people. There's, excuse me, there's more handicapped people. More handicapped people. Yeah. Then there for are. Sure. Why isn't there handicap month where we just all, re nobody parks anywhere. All the parking <laughs> spots are handicapped. <laughs> right? Like, why don't we do that? That's funny. That's really funny. Okay. It's uh, just so dumb. <laughs> I gotta go. We we have to talk about this. Uh, we missed this uh, last week, or actually, it hadn't happened last week. Disney blocked. Okay, so Disney and Ron DeSantis in Florida, the state of Florida, have been having this, Dude, this legal is crazy. this legal jousting match for a year now, at least. Uh, Disney basically had exclusive rights to control this area down there where Disney World is, and then DeSantis, because of Disney's political inclinations, has tried to take governing authority from that district uh you know for the state of florida and disney it checkmated his ass this week basically be right before desantis's group of commissioners or whatever was supposed to take over disney passed a bunch of rules like that have the weight of law basically that gave them like power to do whatever the hell they want they don't even have to ask to build stuff anymore they can build stuff as tall as they want forever uh, right before the new board was supposed to come in. So the new board comes in and is like, we don't have any power. We can do. We can maintain the roads. That's it. So I'm, I'm just going to read that. There's some really... But there's even more oh, to it. Oh, that's what I'm going to get into. I, that, I'm just going to get into the details. Now, that just kind of sets it up. Uh, the Walt Disney Company used a legal clause that name checks King Charles III to apparently thwart Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' attempt to strip the company of its self-governance power in the state. For nearly a year, like I said, state legislators encouraged by DeSantis have sought to exert more control over the company's Florida-based theme park. DeSantis also wanted to rename the area uh, the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District. Until recently, there have been no major public discussion about dissolving Disney's long-established special district, which it's occupied for 55 years. Here's the thing, though. Disney was real quiet, but what it turns out they were doing was they were having these meetings... And having public hearings that nobody came to where they passed all this shit. Just quiet. Because nobody's like, oh, what are they talking about? You know, corporate governance? Who cares? Not, not, reporters didn't go. Nobody went to these public hearings. Uh, so what they did was, and let me just get this. While Disney has remained quiet on the matter for months, that should have been his first sign that something was wrong. It seems the House of the Mouse has been hatching a plan to retain its control over the land. On February 8th, the day before the Florida House voted to put DeSantis in charge, the previously uh, Disney-allied board signed a long-lasting development agreement that drastically limits the control that could be exercised over the company and its district. As part of a 30-year development agreement, Disney no longer needs board approval to build high-density projects or buildings of any height and can sell or assign development rights. It also bans the board from using Disney's name or any of its characters. 
The agreement includes a royal clause that dates back to 1692 in Britain and would extend its term limit for decades. The this declaration, this is from this is what it says at the end of the thing. It says, "This declaration shall continue in effect until 21 years after the death of the last survivor of the descendants of King Charles III of King of England living as of the date of this declaration." The document says, this kind of clause is most often used in the UK. We don't even do this here. I don't understand it. And typically, uh, it's used when it comes to trusts and provides a bumper against perpetuities. Uh, so, so as long as one of those grandchildren make it to 80, this is also in the thing, this would be for at least 100 years is what they're saying now. I just don't... So Disney has become the government of that is what they, the, that what little they land, but yeah. they were they were no, but now they have way more power now. They can do build stuff without approval, like high, and they can create. Well, they were always a it's, yeah, but it's they had their to get like territory, right? I mean, right, forever. but they had to get sovereign nation. No, it wasn't quite like that. They still had oversight, but they controlled the board basically. But now, now they can. They don't even have to get any approval for like like not even like state. Uh, and the state like, can't li- do anything. Well, they're trying, but it seems like they got checkmated. Is what it I like. think Disney, yeah, played it, but I think they're in trouble. Dude. What do you think that royal family? That's weird, though, right? There's something well, weird that about that. Just lets you know that there's like it's like a wink or something. There's right? still real power yeah. in, the, in that, and, and and that's at at is at, that a threat though? To me, that's like a veiled threat. Like, listen, hey, dude, you know, we're Disney. We got connections to, to the, the royal family, yeah, and bro. and like, dude, because they could easily have said like. This deal is good for 70 years, 100 years, or whatever. But they didn't. They chose to do it by na- name-checking King Charles and the Royals. Yeah, it's super interesting. Weird, right? Something's going on And that there. lets you know how powerful Disney is, that it, oh, it has yeah. connections to the highest levels. Highest, straight to the top. Yeah. And, and it's just one of those companies that probably involved in some really dark shit. I'm sure how he's telling everybody to invest in them right now. Well, it's interesting <laughs> because, like, so, so I, I, again, I know nobody wants us to talk sports in here, but there's something very interesting going on. It involves Disney because sports television is dying right now. Like, we've never yeah. seen it before. ESPN. So so Fox wanted to sell. Murdoch wanted to sell. So Disney came in and bought a lot of the Fox television, Fox movie brands. Mm-hmm. So the government told them, oh, you can't own you can't own Fox Sports and all their affiliates because then you would own ESPN and Fox Sports, and that would be a Antitrust, monopoly. Right. Yeah, okay. So you can't own that. So he sold those. He sold off. Fo- he kept Fox Sports, I think, but he sold off all the affiliates. Okay. All right. So, or I think ESPN or Disney owns Fox Sports too, but they sold off the affiliates. And somebody, Bally Sports, came in and bought them Bally all Sports, up. Bally Sports, yeah. Well, they just filed bankruptcy because they're not making any money. And the reason I bring this up is because ESPN is dying right now. It's it's it, it's dying. That's why when I hear about... Fox Sports International is an international sports program, and uh, Walt Disney Company does own them, yeah. And you know what's so interesting? Is that a long time ago, there was some... Uh, so... ESPN has just gotten the UFC, right? But it was right around when when college sports was happening and they had a they had a UFC event that they had accidentally scheduled, I think. So for the first time ever, they'd taken it from ES, ES, UFC from ESPN and moved on Fox Sports back to Fox Sports because they just left. You remember they got that Yeah, thing? yeah, I remember that, yeah. So that was an interesting thing that nobody really talked about, but but the reason I bring them. all this up is because ESPN is bombing. All these Bailey Sports and local, Bally. all these local sports networks are bombing. Yeah, that's how I watch the Braves a lot of time. Dude, you could see money for the first time in sports going backwards. It's probably, I think that's part of the reason MLB, because they're one of the big products for these, like Bally. Is I think they're shortening the games because they realize, hey, we got to do something to make this marketable in a hurry. Well, I think I think this that's why the NHL has been pushing away all of that uh Pride Night. All these NHL players are like, "Fuck no, we're not playing that. We're not doing that." And the NHL canceled Pride Night. Did they? I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. 
So, so they. This is the crazy shit. They just had that shooting right in in, in yeah. uh, Nashville. Country Music Night had drag queens. The Country Music Awards had drag queens. Yeah. Right after that, like, like country music CMAs, really? Yeah, that's so strange. Isn't it weird? Can you imagine doing that? You know, like uh, in the eighties or the seventies, George Jones and George Strait and Merle Haggard. Yeah, or how about or how about right after like George Floyd gets killed, you have cops on uh you have cops on the BET Awards, dancing and singing. Yeah, but what what do you think that's about? It's all programming, bro. It's all programming. Huh. Yeah, I see that St. Louis Blues will not wear pride jerseys during warm-ups on pride night. The players won't wear the jerseys. Here's a story. Uh, just I had just the first sentence is, is funny to me. Uh, here's the headline, though. Portland man laughed maniacally while chasing pedestrian in stolen $80,000 por- forklift. So this guy, there's some guy that just went on a joy ride in a stolen forklift and like started chasing people around in the city. A Portland man is accused of stealing an eighty thousand dollar forklift from a Portland State University parking garage and driving it erratically at least at least fifteen blocks through downtown, laughing maniacally as he chased a pedestrian and shouting to passersby, "I literally stole this." <laughs> 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 Joffrey Zelensky, 30, was arrested and released from jail Tuesday after police say he stole a construction forklift parked behind a locked fence. So the guy just went and stole the forklift and just started chasing people love around, it, like having a good time. Telling him, I stole this, dude. How fast is a forklift? Who are you chasing? The elderly? <laughs> they can go pretty fast. Some of them can. Yeah, for sure. Isn't that hilarious? Here, here's the picture of him being arrested right here in the forklift. See it right there? Fun. Yeah. Good yeah. for him. All right. Only one more here. Last story. This is from Fox News. Not often you hear about miracles anymore. Yeah. You know, there's some there's some debate among biblical scholars about why after Jesus you don't hear about miracles as much, like why miracles. Now, the Catholic Church kind of keep kept on that tradition of miracles. Yeah. But there's some debate. Like, some people think that there's not, like, there's something changed about, like, the way the Holy Spirit interacts with the world now. But we don't hear about miracles. Here's one from a Catholic church. Uh, here's a headline from Fox. Catholic church claims to have seen really, really cool miracle. I'll let you decide if it's really cool or impressive at all. A Roman Catholic priest claims his church in Connecticut was the scene of a miracle that saw Eucharist hosts multiply last month. You know, those are the little wafers, the Eucharist wafers. The Reverend Joseph Crawley... Crowley, like Alistair Crowley. Okay. The Reverend Joseph Crowley was concluding Mass at St. Thomas Church in Thomastown, that's funny, uh, on March 5th, when he announced that the Eucharist minister saw the hosts, the crackers, inexplicably multiply while he was distributing them to the congregation. What happened is our Lord multiplied himself, Crowley said, according to the outlet. Because you know that's supposed to become the body of the Christ. That's so funny. The body of Christ. According to the Catholic News Agency, Crowley became a totally reliable source for news. Uh, Crowley became emotional when he told parishioners about the alleged miraculous multiplication of the hosts, which Catholics believe becomes the body of Jesus Christ. One of our Eucharistic ministers, that's an interesting title, was running out of hosts, and suddenly there were more hosts. Oh my God, if this guy was Jewish, it would be a new holiday. It's really, really cool when God does these things, and it's really, really cool when we realize what he's done, and it just happened today, the priest continued. Very powerful, very awesome, very real, very shocking, but also it happens, and today it happened. Maybe, dude. Do you think maybe? I think anything's possible. I think sometimes I forget about things, and I see it, and I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Right. So amazing. Seems likely, right? But uh, maybe it's because our, our they're calcifying our pineal glands. We don't get to see yeah, miracles Yeah, it could be. Anymore. Maybe this guy was on a well water as a kid like I was, and so he gets to see miracles. I haven't seen miracles, and I didn't get my pineal gland calcified. Well, I mean, like, you saw miracles. It's called David Copperfield. He was doing That's miracles true. all the time. No, fair point, my friend. You know, it's you, like, dude, you, you have... made those things... You know, you now you, me there. We don't, you know, back in the day, they didn't have debunkers. 
And by the way, if you talk to God enough, people lock you up now. You get 5150. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't allow miracles to happen no, anymore. That's true. You're right. We don't. Okay. Uh, we don't. Uh, we're going to end with an animal. Uh, okay. I, this is my favorite thing. We get to see whether it's a good animal or bad animal. No, this Johnny, even the lights give out now because you take it you, so no, long. It's because you keep knocking that thing out. You take too um, long. By the way, I have one note. You remember my obsession with Doritos? Yeah. Well, they brought back Doritos popcorn. It's not what I wanted, though. It's Cool Ranch Doritos. What was the one you wanted? I like the regular Doritos, the nacho cheese. I have ordered these, though, from Sam's Club. They are on the route to my house now. I will let you know if they're Hold high on. quality. So what was the flavor you liked? Regular Doritos. Dorito-flavored smart, smart food. food popcorn. Yeah. Okay. And that someone who... I have a contact at Frito Lay who makes these. Did yeah. our go fun our our uh, someone came out through? Or, or? Someone came through for me. But hold on, did it, our it got disappeared? It, Why? It, so I think they took it down because it was a joke. I think that's rude. Yeah, I do too. I agree with you. All right, here's our video. You ready for this? So watch this. This kitten destroys this bed, like unmakes a bed, and then this adult cat comes over its mother, slaps the shit out of it, and then makes the bed back up. Oh my God! Look at that. So the kitten, this the mother comes in is like, stop, stop messing up the bed, son. Yeah, yeah. Smacking yeah, him in the yeah, head. Look, yeah. get the fuck off this bed. And then I it's like, oh, we gotta make this. I love this. it. I love it. Isn't love that incredible? It. Yeah. Look at the cat. Unbelievable. Yeah, for Good sure. Good for them. Black All cats right. love to beat their kids. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh my God! What have you done? As we're going, we we were so close okay. to getting out clean. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Last story, you'll like this. Uh, Fortune magazine, Twitter is secretly boosting 35 users, including LeBron James and Mark Andreessen, according to a new report. I totally agree with that, dude. Twitter owner Elon Musk has evangelized treating all the services users equally, but some users are more important than others. Twitter has reportedly given greater visibility to the accounts of 35 celebrities, including LeBron James, investor Mark Andreessen, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and the chief twit Elon Musk himself. What do you think about that? I think it. I think duh. People got their panties in a twist this week because they've started uh, Listen, taking dude. people's blue check marks, including the New York Times had their blue check mark taken. Good, good. I'm take okay them with all. it. I'm take okay them with all. it. Arrest yeah. all the presidents. Take all the blue check marks. I don't care. Tell I it. vote for anarchy. I vote for chaos. I'm going to bed. I gotta do a podcast in the morning. Pick up your guitar. Sing me a song This was Groover's paradise Now the Groover is gone Was a cool little city But time marches on